Hey guys, I'm Greg, your teacher for today. And in this tutorial, we're gonna set up a digital agency website with all the basic features you need, like a home page with a huge gallery image, services page about us, and of course, a beautiful area where people can get a quote from you. If you are someone who likes doing digital stuff, maybe you're a videographer and you're really good at editing, or you are great with Photoshop, or if you're just graphical in terms of artwork and painting and you need to put it online, or maybe it's some different type of um, graphic digital agency that I haven't heard about like AI or NFTs, then let me know in the comments. In any case, I wanna get you a website today for your digital agency stuff. And that all starts with WordPress where we're gonna have the foundation for your site. WordPress is super easy to use. It's the Fortune 500 favorite used by Katy Perry, Jay-Z, Tim Ferriss blog, Time Magazine, Walt Disney, tons of people out there in the digital world. And I'm gonna give you those skills today We've helped over 100,000 people make a website on YouTube so far. And if you're wondering about price, while people in your town might charge you 1,000, 2,500, even $5,000 to make a website, uh, in this video, we're gonna do the website for free. All we're gonna pay for are your domain name, which is your unique.com. We're gonna take it off the web so it's yours. And we're gonna get some hosting space. And basically what you're gonna know here is how a real website works, which is also priceless. And if you were gonna be any sort of a digital agency brand in the future, having a domain name and hosting are things you would need regardless just to get online and put up like your videos or your resume. So I'm so excited, it's gonna be a beautiful website. It's gonna be the kind of site that you keep up for five, six, seven, even 10 years. So it really will take care of itself. All right, enough blabbering guys. If you wanna learn how to create a digital agency without the fluff, then grab yourself a coffee, tea, energy drink, or whatever it is you like to drink and hopefully a shirt that fits a little better and hop on over to your computer where we're gonna learn how to create a digital agency website. Let's do it guys. So here's the website we're gonna to make together today and as you can see, it turned out absolutely beautifully. We're gonna make sure you see a lot of reviews along the site so people are encouraged to reach out to you and start a new project. We're gonna custom design this logo from scratch so you don't have to use a stock logo that you find around the web. Let's learn how to send a little contact message here. So let's say I wanna contact myself and work with this brand here. And when someone clicks send your note, that will automatically get delivered to your email address. They get a little confirmation right there. We can see that new entry of someone wanting to contact us and work with us right from our new digital agency website. And of course, our website is all easy to navigate. We want people to get around and see all of your stuff and be able to hire you. There's my assistant uh, video producer right there. He's checking out the latest specs, some wireframes that he's approving. Leroy the cat, of course, from past videos. You're gonna learn how to show off the clients you've worked with and of course, a video about your services. You can put up as many videos as you want and you'll even learn how to set up an email newsletter with constant contact, so pretty cool along with being able to drag and drop every feature of the website so you can arrange it like any other site you might see and being able to just point and click at the text, change the header size so it looks like a different website or change the font family because you like a different font, you're gonna learn something really cool and that's how to add a custom image slider instead of this image right here. So I'll show you what we're gonna make because I already made it ahead of time. Basically all you're gonna do is click plus at the top and drag in a new section, click on the elements here that looks like a little Rubik's cube, and then maybe we'll search for a slider, which most WordPress sites don't have. You'll just drag in a slider, and then it won't be a blank slider. We'll have actually made the home slider right here. You'll just click it, and now you can load it on your homepage or on any page, and you get this awesome, cool dude that looks like one of my friends from college. You can learn how to add the text, the colors, the borders, Maybe you wanna show that you guys actually go out and do things in nature as a team, do team building. Or maybe you wanna be at a beach. There should be something for every one of you here. So of course, it's not gonna be a small slider like this. That just fits a smaller laptop, like a 13 inch or a 15 inch. It's gonna be a big slider. And every page is gonna be fully mobile responsive too. That's always a big concern of my clients is that people won't have a website that looks good on mobile phone or on tablet but nowadays we don't have to worry about any of that. As you can see, as our website changes in screen size, simulated by me pulling in the browser, everything adjusts on the site so it's responsive and looks good. And you're gonna learn how to make all of it today. Of course, you need an about page to talk about yourself. 
That's me and Dear Traveler right there. I'm gonna show you how to embed PDFs and also embed videos so people can download your product right from your site. And a little bit of cool intro music. So of course if you're gonna have a video autoplay like we're gonna show you, why not have it be a pump up song too, right? And yeah, that's it guys. So services page is not gonna be quite as fun as the about page, but we are going to put in this digital counter so you can have people right away see the number of projects you're making going up. Tons of buttons, you can make unlimited buttons, and I want to show off the clients you've worked with in a lot of different places. So with that said guys, I'm so excited to be your teacher here as you create a digital agency website, and I want to show you officially the list of steps we're going to go through, and perhaps more importantly, what each one costs. So let's jump over to that right now. All right guys, welcome to our steps to make a digital agency website. They're so simple, but we've, God, this chair is rickety, but we've done it a million times, so many times that the chair is about to fall apart. But I wanted to walk you through the steps so you know what you have to do in the video. It's really not much to get a website live now that you've made the decision to DIY it and do it all yourself, and more importantly, what it all costs. So let's jump right in. The first step is gonna to be to choose a domain name. I'm going to help you choose your own unique .com, .org, .net, .biz, .club, .online, .shop, .whatever you want. I do recommend going for the .com if you can find it. And if you don't get your chosen words in there, we have some tips to maximize the impact your site will make and the search engine optimization, the SEO within those words, and yet keep it simple. Hopefully you do get the exact match of what you want though. And you just want the .com because it's the most recognizable if you're talking to someone at a conference and you say, hey, I run like agency awesomeness, they're gonna look up agencyawesomeness.com to try to find you. Um, it also sells for the most if you list your domain name on you know, um, some inter website or GoDaddy someday and wanna sell. So it'll get your blog or website the most money. Our domain name is free and that's because we're gonna choose HostGator. They offer free domain names when you sign up to some hosting. And it's pretty awesome because I used to pay like $15, $20 a year for a domain name and that prevents a lot of people who don't know about free domain names from even starting. So we're good on that. And the next step, once you choose a domain name, by the way, we're here to help in the comments, is gonna be to choose hosting. Hosting is like some virtual space where your website lives. Sort of like you'd pick a nice plot of land with some fertile dirt and some nice shrubs and like cool rock landscaping to build your house at. Uh, hosting is that land where we're gonna build our house, which is the website. So in that analogy, the domain name's like the street address, like 123 Malibu Way. The hosting is the plot of land and the website is gonna be made with WordPress, as you'll see in a second. Hosting is really the only cost here and that's why I place so much emphasis on it. Some web hosts wanna charge you like $50 a month or $200 a month. That sure is golden hour here about 5 p.m. on a Sunday, and you don't need to pay that. So I want you to get a really good combination of affordability and value at HostGator, and all the stuff we're gonna get, like WordPress install tools, free themes, free domain name, free SSL certificate, free SEO tools, and Google AdWords tools, all cost us about um, $5 a month. And we're gonna get it down even less because I have a coupon code for you. So it's gonna be 70% off, and uh, yeah, I'll show you that coupon in a few minutes, but I'll tell you if you want right now. It's called Big Bonus. That's the coupon code. B-I-G-B-O-N-U-S. And it'll get you 70% off your hosting. And I'm doing that just so the cat can't hear that. Once you get your hosting, we're going to choose WordPress.org. And in a way, you already have. WordPress is the place where the most professional bloggers, professional digital agency websites, and professional businesses like household names use, things like Jay-Z, Katy Perry, that thing, they're people, um, Rolling Stones, Disney, New York Times, um, Britney Spears, Pro Blogger, the list goes on and on. And ever since I joined WordPress in like 2011, I just got it. I mean, there's a reason people want to use WordPress and it is the most impressive and the best for your resume too. So um, you're welcome to try other blog platforms like Weebly or Blogger or WordPress.com, which are totally different um, and play around. And then, you know, come over here and join us here when you're ready because I know you'll come here 
pretty soon. And uh, we are happy to have you and teach you WordPress.org. It's really easy. You don't need to know code at all, despite what you might have heard. You just get the domain and hosting, put WordPress on there, and then you log in and blog, just like you would anywhere else. You just open up your website's login screen, log in and blog. Once you have WordPress.org, we're going to choose a theme. You can see the trend here. It's that you get to choose everything. And I want this website to be totally you. So I'm hooking you up with a theme creator in WordPress I've used for years. A lot of people still don't know about them, but they are super flexible and they have looks for everything, every niche. And then within a niche, like hotels or construction or digital agencies, they have several looks like within there. So I really hope you have a lot of options um, because what I pick might not be right for you. And I want you to have like all the images and all the layouts and buttons and just have all the colors and styles work for how you want your content to exist. It's all gonna be drag and drop. So you can pretty much create looks out of other looks and you can create looks you see on the web. Maybe you really look up to a certain website. I'm sure you can create it with the theme we're gonna to use today, which is called Astra. Love it. Lastly, you're gonna choose your destiny. That's step five. So once you've gotten through step one, two, three, and four, and what I mean by that is just put your website on your business cards, tell people about your website at conferences, tell your family, have people visit there, get a few clients in your neighborhood or from your work connections, your immediate connections, and then go from there. The road is open and you know the future is all yours. So just make a better website than what's out there right now. Find ways that the industry needs you and you'll be cruising. All right. So that's the five steps here, guys. I hope I didn't blabber too much. And with that said, let's jump over to HostGator and get step one out of the way. So I'll see you there. All right, guys, so here we are at HostGator.com. When I first started using WordPress, I tried a bunch of different hosts and they made me feel kind of confused. I needed code. I felt like I wasn't smart enough to use hosting and do self-hosted WordPress, but then I realized it wasn't me, it was them. And since then, I've been able to find HostGator where I've been making WordPress.org blogs and websites for people for almost 10 years. I've been really happy and I don't plan on going anywhere else. So let's go ahead and do it and click get started. So we're going to check out the plans now at HostGator. They have hosting for every website, as you can see. And the main two little buckets we want to focus on are the hatchling plan and the baby plan, the business plan is awesome but i never really have a budget for that and i'm assuming you don't either right now especially if this is your first self-hosted wordpress.org blog or website and i say blog or website because when you start out they're the same thing it's really just the wordpress theme you choose that dictates whether it's a blog or a website based on how it looks or it could be a website with a blog which is great too so hatchling plan a lot of great features so you can host one.com, .org, whatever. It's just going to be one site. Baby plan, however, it lets you do unlimited sites. So you can do your site.com, maybe your resume website.com, maybe another website you make.com or your friends or the business down the street. And other than that, these plans are identical. I thought for once I'd show you the inside of what it looks like after you sign up to HostGator. And I have here a baby plan and then also a VPS Snappy 8000. And we're gonna launch cPanel to see what it looks like. So once you get the baby plan or the hatching plan, you'll get email accounts, all sorts of cool tools here. File manager is where you put all your images and blog posts, and this hosts your WordPress files. You can add on other domains. You can also use other softwares like Joomla, PrestaShop. This is what it'll look like, and this is where I spend most of my time during the day when my girlfriend is telling me to get off the computer. But as you can see, HostGator is basically the Google of web hosting and they sync up with all the latest tools you might need. All right, now that we've checked out that, let's go ahead and get the plan going so you can actually get to this step over here. We wanna get from point A to point B and to do that, let's just buy now on one of these plans and for the sake of the tutorial and to keep things on a budget, I'm going to go with hatchling plan and click buy now. So here we are in the host kit order form. We can see that for 36 months, we get the price of 275 per month or for 12 months, we're going to get the price of 395 per month. 
But what if you want to get an even better price than what you see here? Well, I can help you with that. We're going to click back. And then up top, we're going to just get rid of the web hosting and type in my name, just Greg, G-R-E-G, -E after the forward slash. And then keep your eye on these three prices. And we're going to hit enter. And I'll take you on a tour of our little secret discount page. So welcome. It's an honor to have you here. So we can see 264 is now the outright best price. Let's click buy now and let's go ahead and get set up. So in step one, it's choose a domain. We're going to register a new domain name here. But if you already have a domain, like you bought one on GoDaddy, for example, a year ago, just check this tab and put in like your other domain name. Make sure to add the extension like .com and then I'll show you how to connect it to HostGator after we buy our hosting. In our case, we're just gonna get a new domain name so we can start totally fresh. And the domain name I have in mind for us today is youcandoit.com. I'm a little disappointed I can't get the .com, but because HostGator has partnerships with all these other extensions, I can actually get one that I like even more than the .com, which is youcandoit.tech. I would say that you should go for the .com if you can, just because that's the most profitable domain extension if you want to sell your site someday. It's just the most recognizable to have the .com, but in our case, we're going to mix it up. Okay, we're going to check the no domain privacy because that's just another cost, as we can see, per year. Okay, we're going to choose our hosting plan. This is one of those steps that we already did before. Hatchling's good. And here we can see the discount is new and improved, so got to love that. You're going to save more money than pretty much everyone else who signs up to HostGator and doesn't know about our better discount. And that means you can get 12 months for 264 That is the sweet spot. And yeah, 12 months is how long it took me roughly to learn how to make money with the WordPress site. So I'd recommend going that route just so you don't sell yourself short. You stay online long enough to make it a success, and then maybe you can do it for a living quit your day job and have all sorts of entrepreneur style fun like everyone seems to talk about these days. Okay, now we need an email address to create our account. Password, super easy, just make it something you'll remember. All right, and then our security pin right here, so no big deal. Now we're done with step three, great job. Now step four is really the only part that might take a little time. Just enter in your billing info like you would at Amazon or Apple or Uber or Android or wherever you shop online. All right, great job, guys. And all this info is my for real info, so I just had to blur it out there so people can't go on a huge late-night food run on Greg's dime here. If you're international and the credit card is not an option, try PayPal. Or just let me know in the comments below the video if you need another solution. I'm sure we can find one. In step five, all we have to do is just uncheck things. So HostGator's already done that for us. And a lot of these tools can be set up for free with a WordPress plugin, or I can just show you how to do it. Now in step six, all you gotta do is make sure you have big bonus entered and validated, and it's not case sensitive. So looking good. So this is gonna work great. We've got our domain name for free. Hatching for 12 months is discounted. You don't even need to look at these black numbers with the line through them. Just look at what we're paying, which is gonna be 264 times 12. Again, you don't need to look at the black number. Discount's awesome. And we're now ready to become a HostGator user. Like I've been for almost 10 years now. It's been a lot of fun, a great journey, a really good way to make some side money too with your hustle from all the websites and blogs you can make. And without further ado, we're gonna check this box right here. And we're gonna click checkout now. Then in the next step, we're gonna get your WordPress installed just like the pros do with wordpress.org. You might have not thought you could do it, but we're gonna do it, it's gonna be easy without any code. And I'm so excited, so let's click check out now together and move forward in the tutorial. All right, of course there's a CAPTCHA. All right, moment of truth. All right, we can skip this little survey here. And it worked. Hooray. All right. So now we can just click get started and build your site with WordPress, just like that guy's doing. So at this point, guys, HostGator is creating our WordPress account. 
they try to do as much of the WordPress installation process for us, and it's always evolving and getting easier and smarter. So I'm excited to see how it works. All right, fantastic. It says your WordPress account is ready, and they've given us a username, password, and a WordPress login. And we're gonna have to change that domain name there in a couple seconds. So we're gonna just open up first a little new notepad here, and I'm just gonna paste in this info so that we always have it. Okay, now from this screen, we can click go to WordPress. All right, and we're in guys and gals. So we have welcome to WordPress, our own version. It's obviously gonna be the most updated version of WordPress, super cool. And WordPress is always updating. If you click updates, you'll get whatever they're making for you. We can click on the site title up here, which is our temp domain name. And that'll take you to the front end, which is how the world sees your blog, your website. And when you click on the site title on the upper left again, it just takes you to the dashboard, which is where you do all your editing. So for some reason that was hard for me to understand at first, but it's sort of like if a painter took the painting and flipped it around to show their client or their subject and then flipped it back around to work on it. And then that's how it would work. So one quick task we wanna do before we build a WordPress website with HostGator Web Hosting is just to change our domain name and get rid of this temporary domain right here. It says something like Gator, then your number, then temp, then domains, and then just some random letters that don't even make sense. So let's go do that and then we can build on a real domain name that Google will like. Okay, so we're just gonna to go to hosting from our portal. Then we wanna to get to settings. So let's click on manage. And here's settings, click settings. And then we're gonna click on change domain. And I'm just gonna go ahead and write in our domain name again. So we're gonna write, you can do it dot tech, just to make sure that we have it in there correctly because some of you will have something different and update it. Okay. It's just gonna say, you've already done that. Now in WordPress, let's go to our dashboard. Okay, log in one more time. And we're gonna come down to settings general. And we have our domain name in here too. So everything should be working. Of course you can change it so there's a www here in WordPress address and you would have to do that. Then you'd have to add the www in site address too. But we like it just short and simple. Let's click on our site title and we'll actually notice that just by doing those steps, sort of a little bit of magic, that step in settings right here by changing our domain name and saving it even if it was already the right domain name. And then going ahead and checking WordPress made the domain name behave. Now we have our real domain name in here instead of our temporary domain name. So congratulations, hope that worked. And if you found a different technique or some problems with that method, then let me know in the comments below the video. You wanna have something cool too because we have our video going, subscribers are watching. You want your Ben and Bone so bad. You can learn about Ben and Bones at petprinciples.org, our pet blog which clearly the Kavapoos crave. So after we install WordPress, I like to start every WordPress tutorial out with the basics, as we call it. The first step in the basics is gonna to be to learn how to change your site title. So that's up here. And we can do that by going to the dashboard. And also when you go to the dashboard, you'll be clicking on this little dash icon right here, which will take you, once you click it, to the back end, AKA the dashboard. They're the same thing on your WordPress site. And then when you click on the home icon, it'll take you to the home page. So this is exactly as the world sees it. Everything you make will be displayed on this screen right here or on a blog post. Whatever the site looks like will be displayed to the world. And you know you're editing because you have this black nav bar at the top, but the world won't see this bar. They won't see edit post, edit site, the WordPress icon, or how do you Ryan or any of that. And the way you can tell what the world sees is by hitting Command Shift New to open an incognito tab. Then just type in your domain name and you can see once we get past here, 
exactly how the world sees your new blog or WordPress website. So they'll just see the white screen or whatever you put up on your theme. And on yours, when you're editing, you'll see everything you make to the white screen and whatever you put up, plus this navigation bar when you're logged in, which of course we are now. Okay, great. So back in our dashboard, we're going to head over to settings, general, and it's right here. You can change your site title. So in our case, we just want to have it say the name of your site, like your domain name. So this could say my WordPress blog tutorial, but in our case, I'm just going to keep it really simple and go with something relatable today. We are learning how to build an agency website. So agency is good. And then for tagline, we don't want just another WordPress site like thousands of other sites have. We want something cool. So I came up with digital agency extraordinaire. Next in our basics, if you want to change the way your WordPress URL, AKA your site address shows up, meaning you want to put a www in there, that's fine. It'll just be the longer version of your domain name and you have to make sure to enter that www in below in site address as well. If you just change one of these boxes and save it, your site will break. So if you make that change, make sure to do it to both of them. In my case, I think short is sweet. And in any case, if someone types in the www for your domain name, but you have it written here without the www, it's just going to redirect to the shorter version of your domain name and they'll see your site. So seems to work the best both ways for without having the www right here. Next up, we have our admin email address. So this is where you'll get email updates from WordPress. Like if a plugin needs updating or if someone foreign or strange tries to log in, it will tell you that via this email. And this will also be where payments are sent. So if you have WooCommerce and you have a store, then you're going to have payments sent. This email is really important. Just make sure you always control and know where this email is going. We're going to say anyone cannot register because that can lead to more spam. And these other settings are pretty good as is. And save changes. All right. Now our site won't look too different. You'll just change what it says up here in the site title and then what it says in the tab. So it'll say your tagline. Let's also head over to our dashboard and check out the plugins where we can add and delete plugins. Our plugins tab is on the sidebar and it just decides what your site can do. So I've done a lot with our site. We've built other websites on this domain name and that's why there's this trail of cool plugins like Metaslider. But in your case, you might just see the demo plugins that WordPress comes with. So you'll probably see things like HostGator, maybe an opt-in form, and maybe a contact form, basic setup plugins. All the WordPress plugins your site just came with are free. And if you delete them, there's no harm done. Assuming your site's not using it to build a bunch of stuff right now, you can just delete it and then get the plugin back for free if you want later on. So let's say you end up deleting classic editor, you hit the red delete and okay, and it's gone. Well, if you go to plugins, add new, you can always find that plugin right here. If it's popular enough, it'll be recommended on the plugin main library screen. Otherwise you can just search for something like, and WordPress will find it within the plugin dashboard. You don't even need to leave your WordPress site. You can just install it again. Okay. I'm going to go forward and clean up the plugins. And I'll tell you some ones we're going to keep too. We're going to keep Akismet because that's a free spam protector. And we can just manually enter that key later on. Go back to plugins. I don't think you'll have all in one migration yet, but that's the best plugin I use to migrate one site from a certain domain name to a different domain name. If we want to go live with it on a totally different URL or .com, it's really good for exporting and importing your site. So I'll leave that one active just to give you a little taste of it later. Maybe classic widgets. We are going to keep active. I would recommend installing that one if you don't have it, because that'll let you use all the WordPress widgets of the past and you'll be arranging them and designing them in the way we've done for 10 plus years that everyone loves. And if you don't have classic widgets, you'll be building widgets with the block editor in WordPress, which is kind of clunky and we're all not really sure why the WordPress developers made it that way. So let's keep it classic. Okay. I'm going to delete Elementor and Metaslider because those will come in just a moment in the tutorial. Our theme is going to install those automatically for us with a couple clicks. We'll see how to do that. And I'm going to delete all the site origin 
thingamajiggers because I think those are from way back in 2016 when we made a business website here. Starter templates gone. Insert code is great in the future if you need to insert third party code. And forms light is gone. And reset. Just FYI is another way of totally clearing your WordPress site and starting fresh, just like your default install would look. So that's just another way of doing what we did in the delete install in Softaculous. Okay, great. You should only have a few plugins on your list at this point. We're gonna get more from the theme of our choosing, but generally less plugins will make your site run faster and smoother because they take up space. And sometimes they can even conflict with each other, which is definitely when you need to bring Greg in to fix things. Let's go to our site and we can see things didn't break. That's awesome. And now it's time to change our theme. So to change your WordPress theme, you're gonna go ahead and research themes and beat yourself up and think about it forever and go back and forth. Just kidding, we're not gonna do that. When I first changed my theme at honestcollege.com, I had to go ahead and ask my sister and her friend. We were on vacation, I think in a hotel room in Italy. And I pulled up a bunch of themes from Theme Junkie and we reviewed them and they picked the top three. I ended up going with like a totally different one. So tricky times and a lot to sleep on. In our case, I want to save you that headache, so I've already picked out one of the most popular WordPress themes, which is great because it's popular, but especially great because it lets you drag and drop things around. So you'll never worry about how to put like a blog post in the header up here or a button in the header or move something at the top down the screen or move a Facebook like box, et cetera, et cetera. I want you to have full control with point and click editing and drag and drop. And that's why we're going to use Astra themes. But if you do choose to build out your website as far as you want with the demo WordPress theme, I commend you. I've done that before too, just to see how far I could get because after all your site is starting with it, maybe it's a good idea. It is mobile friendly and responsive. It just also happens to be used by hundreds of thousands of other WordPress sites that are starting right now as well. So you'll have to compete with them. But if you want to go for it, Congratulations, I commend you. I'll help you build a WordPress website with the demo theme too. In any case, let's go back to our dashboard and let's get this theme changing out of the way. So now we're gonna hover on appearance and click themes. And we can see it's recommending Astra because it's gotten a lot of really good reviews, but some of you might not see it right here. So to get the theme here, you can click add new or click this blue plus, they are the same thing. And I'm gonna do a search for Astra, even though there it is again, out of the corner of my eye. And once you found Astra, just open it up if you wanna preview it. Previewing is an okay method. You can see some of what you can make, like icons, testimonials, these really cool featured boxes. But if you click right, it's gonna take you to other themes. And that's not what we want. We don't want themes that sound like Astra, like Astral or Astralis. We want Astra itself. So once you're here, click on activate. Okay, cool. And right away, your site's gonna become more powerful. So we didn't have this Astra tab in the sidebar before, but now we do. And you can see you get all these different little powerful corners of the web too. Let's check them out. When we click Astra, you can see you get quick settings, like you can now change your site identity from the screen. You can build a header, you can build a footer. All sorts of cool Astra Pro models. If you feel like upgrading, I'll give you a link in the description to grab any discounts available. And Astra integrations, which are just other free plugins that they've made for you that work especially well with your new Astra WordPress digital agency website. That's a mouthful. It's a great idea to launch from this screen to go to different areas of your site. But we wanna keep moving forward right now with a template, which is basically a theme on top of a theme. And that's why we're gonna click Starter Templates, Install. So most people build a WordPress theme with just a theme install like WordPress 2021 or WordPress 2025 or something. But in our case, we have the theme, which is Astra, and we also get a starter template, which converts our website into something totally different right away. Here's our guy from Astra, great dude, super laid back, and one of the best developers I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. If you wanna watch his video, I'd recommend it, but in the interest of time, we're gonna build your website now. Next, we have to choose a page builder. Page builders are key in WordPress because they are how every page is built. The page builder refers to 
the tool you use to drag and drop things around a page, how you lay it out, like whether it's full width, medium width, whether there's a sidebar or not. And of course, as WordPress has been around forever now, there's become some dominant page builders. I want you to know how to use the best page builders. So if you jump into a different WordPress project with clients or with a different team at a different company, you're probably using the page builder they use. And for that reason, we're gonna select Elementor. It's really become the best over the years. Block editor would be the default WordPress editor that the WordPress designers themselves are making. Still needs some work in my opinion. And Beaver Builder, I'm not sure why that's there, but it's kind of cute. So let's grab the number one, which is Elementor. And then right away we get all these starter templates, which are built specifically for Elementor. So when you choose these awesome looks, like you could become a photographer right now, you could become rejuvenated with a wellness website or an organic food website. You're going to get the theme itself, which is Astra. You're going to get the starter template, which are these ones right here, like Lotus Spa is a starter template, Organic Store is a starter template, and you're going to get Elementor inside of it to move everything around and build. It's kind of like you choose a city to live in, like Tampa, Florida, and then you choose a neighborhood to live in, like you want to live in the Bayside or something, and then you choose a real estate company to build it, and you choose an architect. So they're all little parts of the process. All right, and you'll notice that a lot of these Astra starter site templates are free, but some come with that premium tag, so you'll need to get the essential bundle if you wanna grab those. I think there are plenty of options to go with in the free world though, and you could probably build WordPress websites with Astra for an entire lifetime with the free ones. And that's why we're gonna stay free, and the template we're gonna use is just under business. It should be the first one called agency. So click that drop down to stay here, It'll sort for you and we're going to grab agency. And then with an agency, we can see there's some examples like a roofing agency would be kind of crazy. Maybe someday we'll make that. But for now, we're going to do the digital agency because that's the name of the video and click it. And here we go. So the first step in our digital agency template is going to be to make a logo. We'll make one in a little bit in the video using PicMonkey. We don't have, so we don't have one and we can just click skip and continue. Next, this part's really fun. It'll let us choose the colorway of our site. So when we click on the different examples, the overlay on the homepage changes as does the link color and also the color when you hover on the button. So I've reviewed all of these on my own time and I know that I really want a cool light kind of carefree oceany blue. So we're gonna go with the light blue. There we go and now we can change our fonts. All right, so this would be one area where I'm not too good. We can see Astra's recommending DM Serif slash Poppins here, which they know will work good with a variety of sites, and they're giving us the different choices in terms of how the font displays. I have to be honest, I'm pretty bad with these fonts because I like the way everything looks, kind of like a puppy, like everything tastes good or everything is comfortable for me. So I'm not the best eye, but I'm going to go with one I think will look good on a variety of your sites. And that would be the second one from the left on the lower row. I just like how it's a little bit taller font, a little bit thinner, and seems to grip the eye. It's kind of a toss up for me between these two, but let me know which fonts you like the most and why in the comments. I'm sure your choice is better than mine. Okay, once you have the right font, we're just going to continue. And it's going to ask for a little bit about herself. So sure, I trust Astra. This will help us get updates about the product. And we can be at the forefront of the Astra world. We're making it for ourselves. All right, we'll get the newsletter. I probably have that like 10 times now from learning how to make a WordPress website so many times with Astra and with you guys. And for the advanced options, this part's really important. We want import customizer settings so our WordPress customizer will look even more powerful. We want widgets because that's part of our site, the widgets are. We want required plugins, also part of our site. Content is the site itself. And share non-sensitive data, maybe we'll just uncheck that one. And submit build and my website. Okay, it's gonna take a moment to build your site if you feel like getting a snack or whatever it is you like to drink and heading on back, that's fine. And it took about three seconds, which is way less time than it take to hire your developer from your local town. And it was free, so way less money as well. We're done. Thanks, my man, CJ. And we can view your website. 
And sure, we're gonna tweet that too, just because we're that stoked here. We like getting all goofy and nerdy when we're excited. Okay, here's our site, guys. We have the font you chose, and all of the amazing Aster content is at your fingertips. Great job. So the basics are almost done. I just want to get you that SSL here so you don't have any trouble viewing your site on different computers, like if you open your friend's computer or if you go to the Apple Store and you want to like click on your ads to make a little money. It won't show up sometimes if your SSL is not in order. You have to have your life together with your SSL. So let's get that set up by going to Softaculous. Oh, just kidding, we're gonna go back to our HostGator dashboard and click the dashboard button. And now to get your SSL figured out, let's go ahead and launch cPanel. I'm gonna do a command find for SSL. So here it is, it's the SSL slash TLS status. I'm gonna click on that and make sure that our site's SSLs are active. So let's search for my WordPress blog tutorial or whatever your site's called and we'll see if it's validated. All right, so we are valid with an SSL. We get the green circle. You can view the certificate if you choose to. HostGator comes with this for free now because they're amazing and they want us to be secure and collect credit card transactions and just look trustworthy everywhere on the web. But because it's not working, let's go to our site here and let's go back to the dashboard. And I want to hit plugins. So we're going to go to plugins and add new. And I'm going to show you how to install the really simple SSL plugin. Search for it in the search bar. Okay, so to get your SSL working from your homepage right here and on every page on your site, you're gonna need to either pray that it just starts working on its own because we were paying for one at HostGator and it's already free, or we can go the forceful route, which is to do the plugin. For the plugin, we wanted to get really simple SSL and force our SSL in there, just kind of hammer it on sort of like you'd hammer on like a remote for your TV. You just click on and on and on until the TV worked, even if you didn't know what you're clicking. But in this case, it doesn't want to install the plugin because our PHP is not quite to the most up-to-date version. A little info about that, WordPress often updates the PHP within their core software and everything is interconnected with WordPress because it's one big open source community. So sometimes the PHP that we downloaded to our site is like 99% up to date, but the WordPress team out in the middle of nowhere changed the PHP and made it a little bit better. We have to ask HostGator to update our PHP again. So let's take you on a little journey of asking HostGator to update our PHP. To do so, we can come back to your HostGator portal right here, and hopefully you just left it open. And we're gonna click on the chat icon on the lower right. And then we'll just say update and then they'll ding us. We're gonna say update PHP. Okay, let's go questions about services. Existing service. Now we can do the update PHP. And real agent. Okay, and even if HostGator gets a little confused with their live AI, they'll still get you a person. Generally their customer service is great. It's a five star sort of feel and pretty much the Google of web hosting. Seven minutes, a little bit long, all right. But I'm pretty sure we'll still be working seven minutes from now. Okay guys, let's head back to your homepage guys. And now I wanna show you how to make a logo for your WordPress site using PicMonkey. We currently are wearing the default logo from Astro Starter Templates, which just says logo Ipsum. It's kind of cool, nice shapes, but we want a logo that's original and amazing and memorable. And PicMonkey has all that. PicMonkey, in fact, has all the tools I use to make any graphics, like YouTube thumbnails, blog thumbnails for the images and the featured images. I use it to put text on top of an image or just to make a circle out of a person here. And really, it's the best. I can't say enough good things about PicMonkey, whether it's an ad or just a little logo you wanna make gray or a new font you wanna replicate that you saw along the web. PicMonkey has it all. They're almost free to use. It really feels free because it's about the cost of a trip to the coffee shop for me per month. I think it comes out to about 
which is amazing because all the tools it gives you make you your own web designer and you'll never have to hire another one again. It's really cool. It's a ton cheaper than Photoshop, by the way, and also a lot more intuitive. And that said, let's see what it's all about. So to create our logo, we're going to hit create new and you can open something from a computer if you're going to edit like a picture you took from your iPhone or Android or a screenshot. But in our case, we just want a blank canvas to work on. We're going to give ourselves some space here, but we don't need quite 2000 pixels. How about just 400 by 400 is a good way to start and make it. All right. And we're really working here. So HostGator is saying, thank you for patiently waiting. We'll come to you support. Great. I think we can get our logo done before then. Okay. The first thing a logo needs is a graphic. That will be the origin of where you get your colors and how your ideas progress. So let's go to graphics. And one thing I really like for building a new website, especially in the digital agency space, is some sort of nature. As we know on YouTube, everyone's got a plant behind them. I got this cat tower, but I got plenty of plants I can put back there. So let's look up plant. And you can see all sorts of cool leaves, you know, things that might catch a user's eye. And it's pretty awesome. So there's an acorn, could symbol growth. Some of the leaves move, you got a log. And by the way, you don't need to use plants and leaves. You could look up something else like, you know, sunset. Or you could try leaf to get a little more variety. So I'm gonna check out our agency site again and just see the sort of background that the logo is gonna go on. It's already dark, so we're gonna want something a little lighter to stand out. And I personally really like this abstract magnolia, the abstract monstera, or the abstract birch. If you had a white background, I might go with the oak because that purple and magenta is just really intriguing. But in our case, I'm going to go with the birch because that like creates a nice little canopy vibe for me. Okay, cool. Hostgator is talking to us, so let's make sure we don't neglect them. Go back to our C panel. All right. Do not disconnect us. A little typo. They won't mind that. And cool. Now we can drag our logo around. It's not a logo yet, but it's definitely a leaf. Now, Dear Traveler has told me that we should combine two images in our logo to make it even more abstract. And the other image I want is a computer mouse. So I'm going to look for mouse. And if they don't have enough mice in PicMonkey, we can always go to computer mouse graphic in Google. All right, there we go. Let's click on images. And then another trick I love in the graphic design agency space is going to tools and going to usage rights and Creative Commons license. So that means we can use it as opposed to commercial, which we couldn't use. All right. We can also go to the color and get a transparent background. So it'll just look great on top of PicMonkey. Okay, and I'm just gonna grab this clipbar right here and see what other related mice there are. Maybe there's a cooler one. Okay, awesome. Once you found the graphic you like, just right click on it and you'll get the save image as option. And we're going to call this one mouse graphic. And another tip in the graphic design website world is going to remove.bg, which I'll show you next. And from this window, we can take off the background on any graphic. So it just blends in better with our existing project. Upload the file and then just choose the graphic we just got from Google. And there we go. Now everything is transparent and there's no annoying white or black or shades and we can just download it. Bada boom and call it as such, just without the dash preview and save. Awesome. Great job. Now in PicMonkey, let's keep moving here. We can add your own graphic to get one from the computer. And here we go with our mouse graphic we just made. So super cool. It's slender. I think it's going to fit just fine. So the idea is to have the mouse sort of leading into the leaf. And that way you are like controlling the design of the leaf with the mouse. It's almost like you're clicking and creating that image. Okay, great. There we go. Another trick is you can take the graphic you just made if it kind of is in the wrong position and flip the image just by grabbing the sidebar knob and pulling it across itself. All right, so make sure you get the width right. And now let's rotate again. And awesome. And if we need more space in our canvas to edit, you can always up the viewing area 
to say 200% and you'll see a little bit more. Okay, great. Let's bring our icon down a little bit and let's allow ourselves to get some text in to the right of our two icons here. So once our mouse is perfectly fit, so it's creating that awesome birch plant. Now we just need some text. To get our text in there, let's click the text bar and add text. And it's gonna take in one of the fonts we've used in the past, which continues to work well for a lot of niche websites. Poets in one. Of course, choose to your heart's content below in all the list of fonts. But in our case, I like keeping it simple throughout a lot of different websites we make. And that way we are branded to Poets in one. And it's really easy, we can just write out agency. To change the font size, let's drop it down from 125 to about 72. And you don't need to be limited by the default font sizes. You can just write in your exact size right there. Cool. Now let's bring our text up a little bit more. So it's underneath this awesome umbrella we've created. Cool. We can align it using the vertical line and the horizontal line to part of the plant and the center of the mouse, which is awesome. Just make sure you get it to stay there. And lastly, the part everyone always asks me is how do you change the color of your logo text so it matches the color of a different part of your logo? Well, PicMonkey makes that really easy. Just hover on the text, click it so it's highlighted. Now go to text color, and you can change the color, of course, with the default colors, but a lot of people don't know, and get pretty close, but a lot of people don't know about this eyedropper tool. Once you turn your mouse into the eyedropper, you can hover on other parts of your logo, like the leaf, to grab exact colors, even the really intricate colors, like the veins in the leaf. Awesome. Okay, once we're satisfied with our logo, we need to go ahead and crop the image down to the right size for our website. Let's go to edit and crop canvas. And we can pull in the white space we didn't use. Just grab the corners and pull it in and pull in the bottom a little more. There's HostGator saying they're ready for us just in time. And we should still have a transparent canvas. It just shows up as white now to help us view what we're making. Okay, love it, love it, love it. Let's apply that crop. And then to save our logo, just download it, of course. PNG is the best quality. Download, and we're gonna name it Agency Logo Volume 1. Awesome job, guys. Oh, we might need a different name because we already have Volume 1. Let's go Volume 2. Save it, and we are really working on a tight time frame here and pulling it off. To get this logo on our website, let's go back to our domain name and click on Customize. Customize is going to be the second most important place where your WordPress edits go on. So the first most important place is going to be within Elementor and the second most important place is Customize. And I'm just showing you the second most important one first for no apparent reason. So within Customize, go to Header Builder and we can see because Astra is so kind, they've made us a custom header. A lot of people bang their head around and have to work with the web designer to get custom headers on their site just like custom footers but you already have one right out of the gate, so you're definitely getting a leg up on other websites in your niche. All you need to do is click on site title and logo, and it'll bring up this upper left editing area over here. We're gonna remove the logo, select a new one, select files, and grab our volume two logo. Now we're just gonna select it, and we're gonna skip the cropping so we show the whole logo, and great. So we get a white box around our logo, which is not ideal. Looks like we have to go back to PicMonkey. And I thought I'd give us a transparent background. I guess I was wrong. What if we go to background color, transparent? Cool, now we have a transparent logo. My bad. Let's download it again and download. We're gonna call this one Agency Logo Volume 3. Save it, that way we have the logo with the white background volume two and logo without the background volume three never know what you're gonna need and come to our site change it upload files select files grab agency logo version three select it skip cropping and voila nice work if that mouse doesn't show up fully mm, that's tough 
All right, and while we're editing our logo here, HostGator has now come through in the clutch. And I'm talking to our boy Jonathan here. I'll give you the recap of our combo. They just said, HostGator will often ask for your pin, four to eight digits that you created when we signed up. And I've gotten the support request into them to update the PHP. And he has confirmed that. So he should be on it for us. I just have two things going at once here, and we're just going to make sure this mouse is nice and bright. One way you can do that is by going to the shadow and outline, and PicMonkey gives you this really convenient outline feature, which is going to be kind of a lot for us if it's that thick. Let's click on the color and make it white. Okay, cool. And then let's go out of here, and you can actually change the thickness as well. So something like just a little bit would be good. Like a three is perfect. And for intensity, you can also make that a little bit less so it's not quite as wide. Maybe a three and a 40. And perfect. And let's make sure we've applied it. Click out, it's still there. Let's download again. And this is gonna be PNG download. ANC logo version four. All right, and hopefully you won't have that many versions of your logo. But hey, you got to put in the, the time here to get it right. Now we'll change our logo. Upload, select. There we are. Select it with that little white around the mouse. Can't see it there, skip cropping. But we can see it here and that is so cool. I'm so pumped about our new logo. Just make sure to publish it so the whole world can see it. And of course, if we want our logo a little bigger, they've given us this width meter right here. So you can go ahead and make the logo bigger and it'll also bump up the sides of our navigation menu because it has to correspond with our logo height. So we're gonna stick with a nice round 180 and beautiful. And if you want a different logo for Retina devices, you can check that one and upload the image there. But I think our logo will look great across all devices and let's publish it. Great job. All right guys, let's see what Jonathan has to say now. I got your email, thanks for verifying. Let me go ahead and check and access your server to check PHP. Great, so we have this whole experience with Jonathan and HostGator as we make our digital agency website in WordPress. We're doing it together. And next guys, I wanna show you how to make a blog page so that we can have a blog in our navigation menu and a place for our blog post to go. So when you have new posts, create idea at launch, you publish it, you obviously want your post to uh, archive top to bottom on a page so that people can like read them like and search for them and you'll have a huge library, like a ton of content. And some themes don't come with that. Some people don't know how to make blog posts in a list like that, but you will right now. So all you gotta do is go to your dashboard and head over to pages and we can add a new page. So the way you create a blog page is the same way you add any page. We can see the pages live on our site now. And the way you create a blog page is the same way you create any page. Just click add new. And I know it seems intimidating at first to make like a whole new page and it's blank, but at least we're not gonna use the WordPress block editor here. So get out of here, go back. Let's go to plugins and add new again. And as you can tell, we'll come to plugins from time to time throughout the tutorial. We're gonna get classic editor installed like we talked about before, which will help us edit WordPress in all the classic ways that we've been doing and loving for over a decade now. Once that's activated and you go to pages, add new, then you'll see the usual WordPress page editor with this white screen here and the Microsoft Word-esque editor, which we've all come to know and love. You can toggle the toolbar to get even more, but in any case, the blog page is really quick to make. You just call it blog and you publish it. We're gonna leave the default template and everything. So we don't need to write any content in this page because it just serves as a page for other things to go into on our site. And the way you make other things like the blog post go into this page is by going to settings and reading. So different from general, different from writing. In reading, we can see your homepage displays a static page. That's good. That's what Astra Starter Sites is. It's a static template, which is a static page. Whoa, why did they all go sad? Weird. In any case, a static page for home page is home, that's great, but we need a static page for post page, which is blog, and now we can save changes. And now once you publish blog posts, the blog page we just made 
will know to inherit those blog posts onto the page. Pretty cool, right? Let's go to our homepage and we can see things didn't change a ton. In fact, our navigation menu is still the same. So how do we get that blog page in the nav menu? Well, to create a navigation menu, which is also in our basic section of the tutorial here, we're gonna hover on the dashboard button here and click menus. That's just one of the many ways to get to menus. Menus are super crazy at first. I never knew why this screen looked the way it does. Like why is this rectangle off to the left and on the middle we have this like white area but you can't do anything. You can't put your mouse here and write. Well, all you need to do to get this page working is it's actually really simple. You just pop in a menu name like main menu and then you click save or if it's the first time it'll say create menu. Okay, great. So basically all you need to do is make sure it has a location like primary. At least one of those has to be checked. So in our case, primary and footer are good. Save it again. And now to actually construct the menu, you need to select pages from the left. So it'll automatically show you your recent ones, but that's not that useful. Let's go to view all and check blog and add to menu. And now it'll populate in our little editing area and you can just drag how the menu appears or you can make drop down items by indenting them. Kind of cool. We want blog at the second to last spot and beautiful. You can also put in blog posts onto this menu, custom links like to a third party site like Google, Facebook, Instagram, or categories if you have a specific category of blog posts. Let's make sure to save the menu and it should be looking good on our site. All right, and Jonathan's saying that our package conveniently comes with free Let's Encrypt SSL, and it's already active, so things should be working. We're kind of in that no man's land where we're just waiting for things to work now. Okay, guys, quick little pro blogger lesson time from Greg. Here's a perfect example of when WordPress is not looking like it should, just because we have to wait a little longer. We've cleared our cache and our cookies, but Jonathan's telling us that it has a padlock and should show up, and he sent us a screenshot even of how it should look. So we know that basically our site has the SSL and the PHP update. We just need to wait a second and let those updates process through. And then this annoying red font will go away. I know it's annoying, but I'm going to go ahead and choose this and take this moment to refill my coffee and I'll get right back to you. And hopefully things will be working. All right, folks. So I took a break for about a half an hour. I made myself a fresh Americano. As Jonathan said, our SSL from Let's Encrypt is free at HostGator and it should be working in the back end. And he's updated our PHP to 8.1, the newest version, to get our plugins working like really simple SSL. So I'm thinking it just took a little time to get the connection between our new WordPress blog and our SSL working. We're going to go ahead and refresh and see if that's the case because like I said, it's been about half an hour. And yeah, let's try it out. I'm going to hit Command R. Oh, still not secure. What if we actually go back to the dashboard and forward? Still not secure. Now, what if we hit the clear cache shortcut now? What if we jump around a little on the site? Services page, home page. Even after all this, you can go to plugins, add new, and you can search for a really simple sub. Install this one and activate it. Now that our PHP is up to date, that plugin will install and activate just fine. And now it's detected our SSL, that's great. Let's just hit activate and go to dashboard. There's a few other things they recommend, but we don't need hardening, burn statistics, or compliance. Go to dashboard and it looks like Maybe we just need to quit our browser tab and come back in. So let's try that. All right, Google secure. Why don't we open up our site here in a new tab and at least it's the gray not secure. Let's log in and head to the homepage now that we're logged in and we did it. Now we have an SSL active. You successfully got the gray padlock and now anyone visiting the site will feel all that much more secure knowing that their connection is secure. What a saga, but at least we did it. Great job, everyone. Lastly, in our basic section of this video, I wanna help you edit the footer. So this is the final area where 
You just have to cover your basics and make the footer look professional so that people aren't thrown off or don't get lost. Let's go back to, you guessed it, customize. And don't worry about that bad gateway. That'll just show up from time to time on a new site. And we're going to go to footer builder. I'm going to refresh the screen to get rid of that bad gateway. And here we go. Footer Builder. Great, so you can see our footer made by Astra it is made of a widget, a footer menu, social, and a copyright. And this makes it really easy to edit things we often forget about, like the copyright. Let's start with the widget. And the widget has an image, which we need to replace. We don't want their logo, we want our logo. Great, and some text, which is the address to our business. So for our address, we're gonna have Chelsea Market New York City, where we hang out from time to time when we're in town. It's awesome to be a member of their creator studios at YouTube. And come on over. I can definitely have you over if you hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, or just in the comments below. You can come over and have a chance to film with the studios there, the diner, the trucks, maybe play some games, see what YouTube gamers are in the lounge. And of course, after we network with them, get ourselves a free wrap. They have some bomb wraps. So we're gonna paste in that address, and I really do mean it, hit me up. Let's make it happen. At least get a coffee together. So we're gonna grab the address from there, we're in, we're just gonna say, um, YouTube Creative Studios, Chelsea Market, New York City. Okay, I'm gonna hit space return to do just a one liner down and publish, nice changes there. And now let's go to our footer menu. So you can actually edit with the pencil that comes up or you can click on the section right on top of it, same thing. Our footer menu has some options for alignment, but right aligned is good. And we're gonna keep that as is because that will inherit the other main menu we made. Now let's hit social and you just need to put in your social links. So I know mine by heart, but if it, it's easier for you just to go and copy paste them out of Google, that's fine too. And I'll of course pitch them to you right now so you might follow us and Twitter is where we have tons of WordPress questions and answers. Really quick, you can catch me 24 seven because it's the last thing I check before I go to bed. YouTube is where you watch long, boring, exhausting videos where we start a agency website in WordPress and spend half an hour working on an SSL. And Facebook is our group. That's a private group for blogging community. So you'll get more answers from people other than me. And it's really nice just to see the stuff that people are building in the WordPress community and gain inspiration from other people's blogs that are blown up, getting sponsored, making some revenue, et cetera, et cetera. And lastly, Instagram is just where I post the golf shots that didn't fly off into the pond. And drop that one in, and we're cruising now, guys. Okay, and there's plenty more social icons. You can add them for all these different social sites you might use and publish. And lastly, we need to change our copyright. So our copyright's at the bottom. It's super easy to have just the copyright symbol via the short code, the year, the title, and the site title via the short code. But if you wanna manually write in a link, like let's say you design this website for a client and they have a digital agency, but you need to have credit because you made the site. You can just do something then like a vertical bar and then just put in website design and then highlight that anchor text, put in a link to your company. So in my case, my company is dearblogger.com. And then once you link it from that anchor text, website design, it'll give you some SEO juice in Google as opposed to just saying, you know, by me and linking your name. You'll get a little more SEO credit for this. Okay, great, now you know how to do it and we're gonna publish and you'll have an up-to-date copyright. You'll never have to change that year, by the way, because the short code will always know what year it is. It's kind of like a iPhone or an Android clock. All right, guys, good job. And that does it for our basic section. I'm so glad you made it through and now we can actually design your homepage. Next up, we're gonna change all the images and videos on the homepage, and we're gonna put a video in, in fact, right here, because we don't have one yet. 
And then after we do that, we're going to change up all the text. The first part is the hero image at the top. So to replace our hero image, we're going to get an image from Pixabay. They're really great here. They're free. They're copyright free. And I just like leaving a link to Pixabay because I thank them so much. So the first image is going to be a beach and I kind of want like a bungalow because that'll be a nice private sort of intimate setting for our hero image. Now we don't want these typical like cheesy huts because everyone sees those and I don't think anyone actually really goes to those. But I do want something more clever, like, you know, something that someone could picture hiding out in and blogging and actually designing. So this is kind of cool. These ones down here, you don't want to click. Those are sponsored. So you'll go to the Shutter stock website or iStock photo. So if there's an image you like, but it's not quite close enough, you can always click on the uh, categories at the top, like over water bungalow. And if Pixabay isn't doing it for you, you can also try Pexels. That's the sister website of Pixabay, which is also really fun once you learn how to pronounce them properly. You might find the right option on Pexels, but you might also find the same options. So I really want something kind of abstract where it's like almost indoors, but not that one specifically. How about if it's a beach like apartment? That's a cool image, kind of an interior design focus. And this image is definitely going to do it for us. So we found the perfect one. So once you find your beautiful image and hopefully it has some sort of symmetry along with it, just click on the free download. We're going to go with 1920, but you can go as big as the 5973 and download it. Just say you're not a robot and download. And I'm happy we used Pixabay after all. We're just going to call this one homepage hero beach and save it. Now to get it uploaded, go back to your site. And for the very first time, we're going to click Edit with Elementor. Edit with Elementor will bring up an entire point and click editor for the entire page you're on. So the whole screen can be edited except for our custom header builder and our custom footer builder. You will not find those in here. Well, you find our footer, but you can't edit it. So the point of Elementor is to be the best page builder to edit stuff in the middle of the page and behind the stuff like the images the text, the links, and the buttons, and we're going to have a lot of fun getting used to it. To edit our background hero image, you're just going to click on these six dots, which will click pretty often, and that'll get you the entire section, as it's called, in this little red header area over here, which is, as it says, just an entire section on your website. So this is a section, this is a section, these are all individual sections, and the background of a section is found in style. Let's click on style, and we're going to choose an image. So we could see we were on that collaborating image of all the people, but we want to upload, select files and grab our beach image. So let's double click that. And once it uploads, you can always give it something like a title for SEO, but that's pretty good. Hero beach image, maybe we'll call it agency beach homepage and insert media and you've changed your background image. Awesome. What if we want to scroll down and change the individual images on the site, such as this image of the woman on the phone or the developers right here? Well, we're going to put a video here, so we'll do that in a second. But for now, the images can be easily changed in the same way. And to be super clever, Greg is going to pull up in his iPhone 13 photos here, where I've taken this developer style photo, just like our little Irish Swedish developers here are collaborating. I'm collaborating with my cat and we're going to go ahead and email us a photo. Pretty common way us digital agency WordPressers get a photo from the real world world onto a website. We call this cat collab. Send it over. Okay. And then here we are. In our Gmail, we're going to grab that photo that should have just arrived. Okay, save image as. And then I'm also going to go over to tiny PNG and we're going to compress this JPEG because iPhone and Android make really big photos and we don't want your WordPress storage space to be filled up any more than it has to be. All right. And that can cause pages to load slowly, which can hurt your SEO adversely. We'll download that photo. All right, cat collab shrunk. 
And with a little bit of magic there, we're now back in WordPress. And we're gonna swap out this photo of the woman lounging on the computer. Just click it like we did our hero image, except for now you can just click the image right on top of it. You don't have to go to the settings of the section background. It's just an image sitting there and it'll take us right to the content where we choose an image, upload, select, double click our cat clap shrunk. Oops, so that would be a problem. We don't want a zip file. What we want is for that cat collab to be opened. Now the image will pop right out of it and we can choose it again, upload, select, and grab that image. Okay, and if WordPress ever stops uploading like this, just go to like upload and then back to media or go out and then come back in. Chances are your image is just waiting to upload there. All right, image uploaded. Let's go ahead and insert media. And there we are. Our website is really becoming real. We actually don't look too bad. Okay, going down, there's three more images we need to replace down here in our highly moded and innovative team right here. And I know I have some good images from the past website I've made at howtomakeawordpressblog.com. So that's how much WordPress nerds we are. We're going from my WordPress blog tutorial to steal some images from how to make my WordPress blog.com. And we just want these profile images because they worked pretty good in the past. So to get them, I'm going to open up my WordPress site and you can always get images from a WordPress library, whether it's your site or your friend's site or another WordPress site you're working on just by clicking on top of the images and it'll open up the media file, which is basically just an image as it would display in Google. You can just right click and save image as. And there is our deer traveler, and we also have our kittens. Those are real kittens. Okay, just downloading a couple more images, and I know these will all be helpful for our digital agency website to inspire people that visit. So I'm gonna call these Comfort Workstation, and also grab some of these beautiful images of things like bees, blocks, and water droplets. Okay, cool, on our site, let's go ahead and upload the images. They don't have to be perfect because of course this is just an educational video, but we wanna pull our website together professionally nonetheless. So let's click on top of one of these images. We can see what type of images they are here. So Elementor and Astro have given us an image gallery. That's super cool, so you don't need to make one from scratch. You have one already basically made here. We just have to swap out the images. Let's X out of it, so we go back to the editing window. Oh, and I also have to keep all these images. Probably another SSL issue. So to swap out your gallery images, just go ahead and click on top of one of them. And on the left, you'll see the panel where the images are located. Just hit the pencil, and it's gonna show you three that are in the gallery. We're gonna click Add to Gallery, and Upload Files, and Select. And we have a few to choose from now after all our downloading work. You can actually upload in bulk by hitting command and selecting. Don't want the cat collab shrunk. And then open all of them at once and they'll just upload and then open. Okay, any ones that you want, just have them check marked and add to gallery. And then we can X out of the ones we don't want, which are from the demo site. We want all of our own content and insert into gallery. And you did it. Okay, so now when we click on the Xbox right there, it will show our own gallery images. And if you have different sizes, you're gonna get this kind of weird format. So let's click on edit on the gallery. And for image size, let's just go with a thumbnail and columns, let's go with five. Perfect. Update and let's see what we made. All right, so we have five images laid out horizontally. If you click and open them, they'll return in their HD format. And automatically the gallery is set to let people scroll to the left or right or whichever way they wanna to go to see your work. So I'm noticing a couple images show up blurry. We can fix that by changing thumbnail to like a medium image. And then we just have to contend with the fact that some are different heights. So we'll update and refresh. And for me, this isn't too big of a problem, but if you really did want all images exactly the same size, you can resize them in PicMonkey. 
just pop them back in there and go to that resize tool we saw. All right, great. Now that we know how to change out some images on our home page, why don't we go ahead and change the final images, which are the clients we've worked with. So to change the clients we've worked with or the as featured on section, you're gonna to wanna to come back to Elementor right here and just scroll on up and let's see what's going on in this section. So we just have a heading, clients we've worked with, and we can see we have four logos laid out across. And this is of course another section but it's an intersection. So that means it's a little smaller and you can always get intersections from your list of elements. Within the intersection, we have four images and we can easily swap them out by opening one, clicking on it to replace it, upload files, select files. Hopefully I have some different logos where I've worked and I do. So I've actually worked for HuffPost. We can swap it with that one, insert media, and we can do the logo Ipsum there too. And we can do the second one, choose image, upload files, select files. All right, and we're gonna pick a few more places where we've worked. ProBlogger was a lot of fun. And we'll round it off with the third and fourth logos. Third one, we're gonna go to Pick the Brain. Did a lot of guest blog posts for them. If you move an image like that by mistake, just hit Command or Control Z to undo. And let's go back to the image, upload files. We need more of just a text logo. Let's do the social media examiner one. And then our fourth logo, upload files. And you can see this WordPress process goes really quick to create a digital agency website once you have a little bit of flow and you get the feel for things. And I think the last one I was going to use is the Lifetime logo. Had a pretty cool website project with them, making marathon websites. So there we go. Four different clients we've worked with. Love it. And if your images float a little bit offline like this, you can always move them down into the middle of the screen. For example, I can click on the HuffPost logo, go to Advanced, and and HuffPost. And we're going to do actually a padding instead because padding will push the logo down within this little space it occupies, it won't push the entire space down. So margin is like space outside the border of a section, which is denoted by these blue thin lines and padding a space within a section. So lastly, we'll do social media and we're gonna unlink the padding and do a quick 30. So that should help kind of vertically center some of your logos because that lifetime logo made us do that. Okay, and we'll update. Next, to insert a video onto our homepage, let's come down and finally we can replace these awesome Swedish Norwegian developers here. And I don't even know what they're coding. They're probably just on iMessage and they're about to be fired from Twitter. So let's get rid of them too. We can go ahead and click on top of the image and we're not gonna do the usual click on top that image and choose image. Instead, we're gonna to go to our elements by clicking this Rubik's cube block up here and search for a new widget, which is a video. And once you have a video, I'm just gonna drag it in so it comes in that thicker blue line, which means it's gonna go on top. See how it's right there on top of the image. Beautiful. Now we're gonna to go to YouTube and we're gonna search for start a blog. And hopefully you find me. If you don't, then YouTube's totally wrong. Okay, and there we are. Not too high up in the rankings though. We gotta work on that, come on YouTube. Too many of those tutorials at the top are just some creator talking about blogging or their blogging mistakes or how to make money blogging without actually showing anyone how to do it. And that's our biggest pet peeve because we actually show everyone how to do it. All right, in any case, rant over. We're gonna come back to our video here and all you need is a link. Good thing we have one. So we'll delete the Astra demo link and paste in our own and automatically you have a video. Could be a video about your travels, maybe a reel for your brand. Go ahead and make one and drop it in. And now for our image, to delete an image, just right click and we are gonna fire those Swedish designers. And everything fits great. Great job and update. Okay, great guys. Next up I wanna show you how to change the find out how link right here 
because this is one of those questions that get a lot in email and on YouTube, which is how do you create an anchor link on WordPress? Well, we know anchor text is some text that you put a link on, but an anchor link is a link you click on, which is anchored to a different part of your site. So it jumps down smoothly and takes the user to the desired section. So in our case, we have an anchor link right here, automatically made by Astra. We just need to know how it works. So we can replicate it. We can see our anchor link is its own section. So let's edit it. And then we can see it has an icon and it says find out how. And if we go to advanced, it has a little margin at the top. That's cool. Style is pretty much nothing. But why don't we open up the find out how and we can see it links to hashtag services. So whereas normal links link to something like HTTPS colon slash slash www.google.com, anchor links link to just hashtag or hash brown as I like to say, and then some ID word. And then that ID word exists around the site. So because it takes us to hire for us, we know that in this section, there's an ID hiding somewhere of services. That's a CSS ID and that's just how it works. The anchor link has the ID written in it with the hashtag in front of it. And then it takes you down to a section where that ID is on a section or on a header. It can be just on a piece of text and that makes the link know to go down to that part where the ID is. So let's say we wanted this link to instead go down to our video. We could put an ID on this section you're getting the hang of it, I know you are. We can grab these six dots and go to advanced, CSS ID of video. Now we can come back up to our, find out how, open up our original anchor link, open up the item and link it to video and update. And then when you click on the anchor link now, boom, right down to the video at the top of the user screen. How cool is that? You can even duplicate that section to duplicate an anchor link or any section, just right click duplicate. Then let's drag it down to a different area. Like maybe we want an anchor link. Where are we going? Under about us. That's super cool. We're just going to need to hit the pencil and get rid of that advanced top margin. So it sits right there and we don't want any left margin either. So it's perfectly aligned with about us. You could go to the content and you can change the item and the icon. So maybe you want the icon of like a team or something, a bunch of people working together, or you know, like some kind of homepage or stats about your company. Maybe you want to go to the reviews or the comments. So you can use something like a comment bubble or two, insert that. And then for the text, we're going to say, read our reviews, great. And then the link could go to somewhere like testimonials. So you just need to create that section or that page. But for now we could put it on why choose us and drop in a testimonial a little later in the video. We just need to give that section its own CSS ID, which is different from a class. Don't do the class here, do the ID. And we'll, and we'll call this one reviews to be consistent. And then up in our second anchor link, edit this one items link is hashtag reviews and that's all we need to do and update and we've created our second anchor link great job break time for puppies hey buddy what do you think of the video you gotta be outside huh put a ball is chasing mr squirrel next guys it's time to edit our text <clears throat> i know you couldn't wait to revamp all the messaging headlines slogans on your site and if you couldn't wait like me then you already put the text into a notepad along with my to do's. I have how, nope, how to start a blog is not it. I have digital agency text right here. And I basically just quickly bullet point mapped out all the different text areas that Astra has given us. So we can drop in our own text, such as these sections down here in about us and all the way down. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, but if you haven't, I recommend opening up a notepad and you can take the time when you're on a car trip or bus trip or train trip and write out the perfect text for you. Or you can just copy mine too. Okay, here we go. So first up we have the main header. And the text they've written in is pretty darn good. It's pretty darn on brand for what a digital agency website would wanna say. But it does need to be tweaked a little to become our own. 
All right, and I'm gonna take these text block opportunities to tell you a little bit about my business at dearblogger.com, how we help people make websites and blogs from scratch, and why we do it. Because otherwise it'd be really boring, so I might as well tell a little story too. To edit any text, you can click the pencil icon to be totally official and write it in the title box, or you can just point and click and write it in on top of the screen. So what this navigator does is sort of serves as a table of contents to get you up and down your site. It's automatically made by the Astra starter templates, and basically it shows how it's laid out. So the whole website is broken down into this sort of a table of contents tree. Right now we're in a text editor, but you could always jump down to a column or a text editor below. A lot of different ways to get the job done when you edit. And if you want to copy and paste pieces of text from your notepad, I totally get it. Just keep in mind when you're pasting into a text editor, if you paste into the visual tab, you might get some weird uh, fonts. But in this case, it seems to go over fine from notepad. I just like pasting in the text tab because that will remove any unnecessary formatting. To delete a section like this bolder section, you can just go ahead and move the navigator and you can right click on the pencil and delete a text section. Okay, here we go, we are almost there. Solutions to help you build a digital agency website or any website you can dream of. It's seeing what you make that keeps me going around here. So go for it and I'll always be here. Okay, and that's all the text. Good job, that wasn't too hard, was it? Great job getting through it. And at the top, I can just write a little more about us. So we started helping people create a website and leave here with a finished website. Learn everything about the entire brand. All right, let's update the text and you're good to go. <clears throat> to see what we made, we can just make our website bigger again and hit the hamburger menu and, and make sure it's updated. If it's a green button there, it probably wants to be updated again and now view page. Great job. Okay guys, so now that our digital agency website extraordinaire is truly looking extraordinaire on the home page, we're gonna progress to the about page. And that's the third one on our list here. So if you wanna do services first, that's fine. You can jump below in the quick links below the video, but I always go right to the about page next. So our about page has a link about two. We'll have to change that. And the cool thing is it's just simple and uses the skills from elementary that we built in the homepage design. So it's not going to be too hard and let's just dive right in. Let's click edit with Elementor, and I'll show you how to edit everything on this new about page. Okay. So first off, we're going to change about us to our story. Boom. Done. Now down below, we're going to swap out this image here because we don't need this woman looking like she's talking about the groceries to her husband. We are going to say we are instead put up a more unique image of our team. That's us. All right. Answer media. Now we're going to say a little bit about us and I'll just zoom forward so you don't have to wait while I write it out. If you want to use an emoji ever hit control command spacebar, bring up the emojis and then you can select as many as you want. So there's me writing and also Dear Traveler writing and looking cool in sunglasses. Okay, and now we're gonna change the part below it. Even though this is pretty good, it's kind of like ChatGPT wrote this blurb for how we're learning how to make a digital agency website. If you're looking for the best website design, development, domain and hosting deal, and market service for your business for help. Okay. All this is made easier for copy lovers. Okay, cool. Our core values are committed to delivering the best, honest and transparent services. We care for your business just like ours, keeping adapting to you technologies. That's perfect. Now for the really important part, which are your reviews. 
So what our clients say. For this part, I'm gonna go ahead and open up our YouTube comments and real quickly grab a few reviews from the past year or so. Okay, great, so we're gonna grab this review from Michael and put our first review in this Elementor box right here. As you can see, this section is but a mere intersection, which you know how to add, and inside is just a testimonial. A testimonial is clearly just a little blurb with some content. Let's just lower up some, and now it's a real testimonial. And we have the person. So the person is important. As for your viewers, they might not be too concerned about the person or the face as long as it appears real, but obviously we can't have two Priscilla's. On YouTube, it's kind of cool. You can get images if you just like grab the image thumbnail of someone, but that's kind of creepy. So we're gonna just grab the comments. All right. And if you paste it directly into the screen like that, point and click, it'll inherit some really weird styling and formatting from YouTube. And we don't want any of that. That's totally gonna make Google think our site is like spam o -jamos. Command A, delete, and paste in the real text the raw text. Okay, cool, and I will do the names too. All right, it's great to see you folks around the channel. We'll get one more, and I mean, our channel just gets so much praise that it's easy to pick out a good review. There's never a bad one. No, I'm just kidding. But we do love the good reviews. All right. So, you guys who wrote awesome comments just get like alias photos. Okay, and lastly, we need one more comment. Oh, there's John, my man, John Ravi. Recently switched to SiteGround. John, you get featured here. I'm just gonna grab the end of your comment because you wrote an awesome, awesome amount right there. Appreciate the length and in-depth. John, super thoughtful guy. Fine WordPresser himself. And yeah, shout out John Ravi. We got the comment in here now and John's gonna get a new photo. So, to swap out one of these photos, Click on the image, just like you would in any other elementary photo, and then we can grab a different one. We don't have another person, we just have ourselves and Dear Traveler, um, but we have this guy, so one of those guys. And I hope you enjoy your alias, John, and I'll see you soon around the video, and hopefully we can make a collab soon, because that would be just what the web needs for 2023, a little Greg and John. All right, so here we go and the star counts are all four and a half that's weird let's click on one of them and change the rating to like you know something like four and then maybe four points eight and then we have to have one of them be like lower so how about three and then the last one is just outright five so that is really cool and honestly, it used to take plugins to put stars on a website. Like you have to have a plugin installed and use the shortcut from the plugin and it would render all weird and get the plugin would get hacked. So now you just have stars from Elementor and it totally does the job. And you can put those stars on any part of your website, like your sidebars. Great, so in the about page video area, you should have a video about your brand and that'll just be helpful because people can learn about you who don't want to read. To get a video in there, we can just come back to any video we're on and we can grab like our WordPress tutorial from the past and we're gonna go down and I don't even remember making that tutorial but that's cool free WordPress tutorial for beginners with a dog and we have how to build a WordPress website this guy's like reviewing WordPress he's not happy um, and yeah I'm gonna go with our professional one here because that was super fun to make all right, grab it and put that on our set right here. Remember to get a video and go back to the blocks or elements as they're called, go to video, drag the video on top in that little sneaky little area above the image, paste in the link. We're gonna delete the and t equals 11 seconds so it starts at the right time. Now for your video, there's also some cool settings like we can have it autoplay for people when they're on this page and you could also like loop it if it's a small video so why don't we see how that works some of these things you might want autoplay some you might not i mean if you have a landing page where it's like an offer and you're being aggressive then it's kind of cool 
we're still figuring out how but to in this case more. i'm like it why am i talking okay all right build a forging business together that sounds good okay great if you ever want to link to one of your important pages that's a good idea to keep a little redundancy people need multiple ways to get to your landing pages and in our case our landing page is our contact page get a quote is not linked to it yet but it will be and we're going to grab the link to contact and put it for the first time in some text right here now we're going to just put it on the entire please reach out today to get started you're going to do that in the text editor on the left and hit the link with the chain paste in that link settings here will give you the option to open a new tab but we don't need that because we're on the same site update that and then update the page and you just learned how to make our about page and we're going to keep that stock image in the background up there because that could hypothetically be our team someday i would just have to track them down and do that by face recognition so hey with ai anything's possible view page and there's your video playing automatically to get one more view. Check it out if you have time. All right, web designers, we're really cruising now. Let's head over to our services page and make a new page. So services is going to talk about, of course, your past projects, your reels, any sort of digital artwork or digital design you've done. And we have three ways that you'll link to our most important page to get in touch so people can hire you. Then we have our clients we worked with, which we can grab from the homepage, or maybe you can put in even more partnerships you had. Lastly, we have our two Norwegian men who are still working on their computer. Still not sure what they're working on or what that little statue means. Looks like from Canada. And then the page is done. So let's get to it. Let's click edit with Elementor again, which we're getting really good at. And right off the bat, we're gonna change services to something a lot less boring, which is how can we help? Okay, and it says how can we help you below, so that's redundant. Don't need that twice. And let's change this subheader. Actually, this is a heading, and this is also a heading, but this one's just smaller because it's an H2, and this one's bigger because it's an H1. So we're gonna change the smaller heading to, here's how we've served, benefited, tough to figure out the right word sometimes on these all important pages. Here's how we've guided. That's a good one. Then we're going to have a number there. So I want to say something like 50 or how about 100 plus digital wonders. Great. We're just going to call our successful projects wonders. Now, if you want to have that number move, let's check out our element and let's look up a widget called counter. So there's countdown if you have a launch or a release date and there's counter. Let's take counter and bring it in beneath right here. So that number is going to be on the move, but we don't want it below. And we're going to have this say a hundred or you can go more. So how about like 145? That'd be a more realistic number. We can remove the title of cool number because we just want the raw number. And then you can change the duration so it goes a little slower or faster if you want. Cool, separator. There are things you can use to separate it like a space. Not sure where that goes so default is good. And then starting number zero, good, good. Let's just go to style and we're going to change the text color to black with a hex of all zeros. That's black. And now we just need to move our number. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to show you how to use an intersection. So back to our Rubik's cube and intersection. And we're going to drop that in right above our heading. Now our intersection is going to get three different columns. So here's a column and here's a column and there's an outer column, but we want three inner columns. So I'm going to right click on one of the inner columns and duplicate it. And now there's three and they're perfectly spaced because Elementor does quick math. So we need to take some of this text, as you might have guessed, for the left column, some for the right column and some for the middle. 
So how about we just copy this whole heading and we put that in the left column. It looks kind of cool centered and vertical, but in our case, we're just gonna get rid of some of that and we're gonna say, here's how we've guided. Love it. Now we can change the size a little bit. We're gonna drop the heading down to an H4 so it fits all the way across. And now we're gonna finish off the heading on the right. You can hit paste again for that original heading. Then on this side, we're just gonna say Digital Wonders. All right, and drop that down to an H4 as well. And now we can delete this original H2. We don't need him anymore. And we can move the number into the middle column. We're gonna go back to typography and we're gonna make the number a different size, which you can do with the size meter. And you can also make it a little bit thinner or darker or lighter, what have you. Okay, great. Now we just want to make this text make a little more sense. So it doesn't quite look right with the text so spaced out. To bring our text and our columns inwards, you can just condense the width of this entire section. You're going to click on the section of the outer variety, go to advanced, and then for margin, unlink it. But for the right, we want some margin, and for the left, we want some margin. So we don't want to hit a minus margin, we just want a hundred, and if it's like a thousand on each side, then that will definitely condense it, but that's way too much. And why don't we instead try to drag these sections in a little more? And you can do that by grabbing one of the sides of the number and pulling it in. All right, you just have to keep track of the numbers that it results on, so I'm still holding the drag so that I can tell like how far in on one side and how far in on the other side. So I'm gonna leave it exactly 21, how about an even 22 on the left. In other words, that number to the right, to the right of my mouse is 22, and then we're gonna go in this way and the number to the left of my mouse is gonna be 22. Or really, whatever. You know what, forget the numbers. Just drag it so it looks good according to your eye, because if it's 22, that'd be too far out here. Just drag it so it looks good and eyeball it. You have my permission to go ahead and eyeball it. And it looks good. And now for our text on the right, we're gonna align it to the right and on the, sorry, I am backwards today. And on the right, we're gonna align that to the left. And eyeball it. And yeah, we just need a little more text here to make it look symmetric. Digital for clients. Digital wonders for clients. All right, I think that's gonna look really cool. Now beneath it, we're gonna have to change our text up a little here in our headers. So this is what we do. I mean, it might seem boring, but people do need to know what you do and it helps just to tell them right here. So whether you are a digital agency for video, for just audio, you know, for graphics, for advertisements, whatever you are, go ahead and put that right here and I think you're gonna love the way it looks. So we do, Right here, we do YouTube tutorials on how to build a website. And we do web design, like we show you how to make a logo and how to design the site with the borders and colors and templates. And we do blogging and content marketing. And we do organic marketing to get your website launched on other blogs and in Google search. So yeah, we kind of do it all. And cool. For the links to go to the Get In Touch page, just click on one of them and go ahead and grab our Get In Touch page with contact link. Copied, come back and get in touch. That is a button. This is the first button we've edited and it's really easy. You don't need to make a button from scratch with HTML and CSS like we did in our past, how to start a blog video. You just need to paste in that link in the button tab and you're good to go. Let's make our buttons a little bigger and you can change the style of the button in type. So there's different types right there, cool. 
And of course in style, there's all sorts of different button styles. For example, I love a good border radius on the buttons to curve them. Absolutely love it. And for the button to have some hover styles, hit the hover tab and you can have a hover animation that sort of changes to make people interact with the button a little bit. How cool is that? All right, so animate to your heart's content. And when you're done with the button animation, move on over to the next section. All right, now that you know how to edit those buttons, I won't need to cover that two and three more times, but our site's looking great now. What I will cover though is how to pop, copy and paste part of your website from one page to another. So if you're on your homepage, edit with Elementor. You know, scroll down and grab a section we've already worked on, like clients we've worked with. So we're gonna grab the entire column here. We don't want the entire section, that'll be like the spacing around it too. Grab the column, copy it, and come back. And across pages, WordPress will know what you're doing. You can just right click on top of this column and paste over it, and it'll change, voila. We just don't want the old column, so delete it, and the new one should take its space. All right, great. So why choose us came along too, and we can delete that. And here we go, down below, we're gonna delete our Scandinavian designers, and we're gonna delete the build a business part, and we're gonna delete this little black bar, just because we wanna keep it simple and to the point. All right, great, and lastly, we just need to change up this text so it's unique to us, so I will do that, and try not to waste too much of your time, because our services page is looking great. Almost done. So update. And before we leave, I want to change out that background image. That's just like really starting to get on my nerves, those people working, because I don't even know what they're working on. So let's go back to Pixabay, and now is a good chance. Oh, that's Pexels. Now is a good chance to use a beach image that you liked, but we didn't choose, so maybe your second favorite image. And believe me, more beach images is never going to cause problems for you. It's only going to relax your visitors. So let's scroll down and find the right one that we didn't use before. Cool one here of the path or this one of the rocks and the coastal coming in, or this one here of the purple rocks, something with a touch for design. I just like the sandy path, because who wouldn't want to run down that? Pre-download, go with the 1920s, not a robot. And we're gonna save this one, call it Beach Path. And now in services, this part's really fun. Click on the section, style, replace image, upload, select, Okay, cool. We're going to insert media and put in what we want to put in and say what we want to say. And if you don't get to see what you want to see on the image, go to its uh, position and change it from center center to something like top center or bottom center, and it should move what's on the image. And if you want to see more of the image, you can go to the section. So how deep does our section go? That goes pretty deep down to the bottom here where this like you know gray area becomes the blue area. Go to there and then go to advanced and we can see there is a little padding on the bottom. And if we give it a little more, we're gonna see a little more image. So there you have it. And update and our services page is done. Great job. All right, let's hit the hamburger menu and see what we made. So our homepage is done, our services page is done. It's looking really good on our about page. That one is done. And our blog page is where our posts are gonna show up. We'll do that at the end. We're gonna make three blog posts which are designed to help you get traffic and rank in Google and build an organic audience for whatever else you're doing on your site, like get clients through a blog. But the last page we need to do is just our contact page. So let's see how to do it. Our contact page is composed of a headline and a little tagline here, some icons with the contact info, some social of course, and a box where people can send you a message. So you don't need to put your email on the website. You don't want spammers after all. And of course we have a map. So let's jump right in and just like everything in Elementor, it's not going to be too difficult. Okay, first up, you guessed it, we're going to change the headline. So let's call it reach out to agency or whatever your business is called. All right. So we are here to help is pretty good, but let's make it a little stronger. We love new clients. How about that? 
is someone's probably a new client and telling someone that you love them. It's a good thing. All right, we need the address. So that again was our Chelsea Market New York City one. And then we're gonna beef up that section two, Chelsea Market New York City. All right, and at some point if I do WordPress classes from home, then we'll make sure to put the address to that sort of a studio. Okay, we're gonna pop in the address right here. So this is just an icon list, which we've seen before. There's as many items as you want. And uh, I'm gonna pop open the number one item and paste in our address. And that's just a Google Maps sort of icon. Cool, next we have a phone. So that's great. We're gonna leave that phone number, but you could put in your own, like whatever, you know, don't wanna move it. Like whatever business or home line you're gonna give people. And we're gonna add one more item, which is going to be our hours, hours of operation. Okay, and we're gonna put a colon, and we're gonna put Monday, Friday, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then a vertical bar, and then we're gonna do Saturday through Sunday. We are also working because that's when some of the bombest, most epic editing goes on. And that's going to be a little later. So we're going to have 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. All right, now people know when they can call you and when they can email you and get a response right away within those hours. Let's change our icon. How about a clock or a calendar? All right, I think a calendar should do the job here. Looks good with the check mark and insert. Gosh, I love elementary buttons. Everything's just so big and quick and easy. All right, and then follow us. So we already have the follow us from our footer. Can we go down to our footer? We can't edit it here, but we can go ahead and get it from another page. Let's open up our site and we're gonna go to customize. And from customize, we're just gonna pop over to our footer builder. Footer builder has our footer menu and our social. I'm gonna grab our social and just open up these links and real quick, just copy paste them in here. So we have our social menu here, Twitter, super easy, paste it in. You can change the official color to a custom color too if you want the Twitter icon to be like, maybe a light blue, that's kind of cool, or have a background. Kind of nice, and you can have a secondary color too, which I think is when the icon is not clicked. What color is it? That's pretty fun. We are actually learning how to design your own social media icons here using Elementor. All right, Twitter's good. Now let's go back and get the Facebook one. Facebook link, awesome. You can do the same thing, open up Facebook, paste in the link and go to custom color. Primary color for Facebook should be more of a dark blue and you can obviously take a screenshot or take a Google image search for the Facebook icon, use PicMonkey's eyedropper tool to figure out the exact blue or whatever color you want and drop that in the hex spot right there. But we're gonna get close enough there. And lastly for YouTube, we'll grab our YouTube link from our footer and paste that in the YouTube icon list beautiful and change it to custom color. Primary color will do like a nice bright red and then secondary color again is just plain white. Awesome guys, all right, follow us is done but we can make that a little stronger too. How about join our social communities? All right, now let's move our attention over to the contact form here and we're gonna strengthen that message by saying send us a note today. Then for the form, this is gonna be a WP form and we already have that plugin working, I believe. So this is contact form. There's also a newsletter signup form and selective form. We just want contact form and for display options, you can choose things like whether the form has a name and the form has a description. And let's update it. So we know our form works. I'm gonna go back here to our dashboard leave our customized screen, and I'm just gonna go to the dashboard and WP Forms is a plugin. So your site is super powerful with WP Forms installed. It exists right here. So it's pretty awesome. Our site comes with newsletter, sign up form, and contact form by default. 
they both have short codes, but it's already entered on our site, so we don't need the short code now. And when you're editing the contact form on this window, you can do things like change the order of the input forms, and you can remove things like subject, or so on and so forth, or write in different labels, like maybe you want this to say something other than name as a label, and the format to have something other than first last. This is where you change all that. Or you could add fields like a number or a captcha. And WordPress will automatically use this form from WP Forms and send it to the email address that you have in your settings general. Remember where we went to settings general to see if you wanted to put the www in your site? That's where your email exists and that's the email WordPress will send form messages to. All right, let's save the form and we're good to go. So back in our contact page, contact form is now working. Let's make one little change though, just so we can say we did here. Under send message, I want that to say something different. So how about send your note? It's a little more personal and save it. And now that'll show up on our contact page. So we're just gonna change our map now. We can click on the settings for the map and let's see what's going on inside. All right, this is just a section. So why don't we click on the pencil? That's where the map is living. So it's a Google map and the location is 1234 North Spring, LA. Boring. Let's make that our Chelsea market location. Super easy to do. Just paste in a new address and WordPress and Elementor will find us. There we are right by the New York, New Jersey border in the Chelsea market area of New York City's west side. You can also change the zoom. It will come out a little bit, get a little more of the geography. If it prompts you to set your Google Maps API key in Elementor's integration settings, you can do that and you can create a key, but it's not necessary just to show a basic map. That would be for more advanced map settings. Or if you wanna show a map with more exotic looking colors or that tracks how people are interacting with it. So we're looking pretty good in the map. You can also adjust the height to show more of your map. It'd be like an even, 500 is good. And we can go to style. All right, and not too much to do here because I'm really content with how our map looks right now. I think this is gonna make a big impact on our contact page when people see it. So let's update. And just like I told you, not too tough. Hit the hamburger and I'll go back and view page. And we now have a fresh looking contact page. The only thing I wanna do there is just change the background image of those people working. You know that's getting on my nerves. So we can do that with another beach photo. I'm just gonna totally bombard our website with beach photos to make our audience have FOMO that they're not at a beach, but we're not either, so shouldn't talk. And let's grab something cool and inspiring like this. Little overhang palm tree area. Boy, that looks nice. Free download, download. And I know it's cheesy to just kind of drool over beach photos, but you gotta do something to get through these winters. Okay, back in Elementor, let's click on the settings again for our header image. Style, choose image, upload files, select files, grab our big beach for contact page. And of course, if your business exists in the city, these could be urban photos, stuff like that. Insert media, awesome. And like we did before, we can change what part of the image shows up and we can change the height of it by going to advanced and giving ourselves some more padding on the bottom. All right, pretty cool. Let's make that our agency. So it takes up a little more space and update. Back to the hamburger and view page and we did it. Oops, what's that? Bad gateway. Let me know if you see that too. But we are now looking good with our fresh new contact page. And we're getting that bad gateway thing. So we're gonna clear the browser cache, just clear it quick and refresh. And Elementor will load your site. All right, now it's really nice that they load our site because we can grab the link to the contact page or you can even click and open it. I'm gonna right click copy link address and now we'll click on header builder. And here we have our get a quote area. There should be a little pencil up top. Let's click the pencil and we can change the link. So let's paste in 
a link to the contact page, but because we were in Customizer, it's got some funny WordPress instructions on the back of it. So make sure it just says your domain name dot com forward slash contact. All right, and then we can change the text to get a quote or request an estimate or get in touch, whatever you want to do, work with us. How about start your next project? It's kind of a lot. How about start your project? Sounds a little bit more inviting than quotes and estimates, right? Because those mean we're about to pay money and start your project is a lot more fun. All right, link rel, open a new tab, visibility look good and we'll publish it. And also I would like something like work with us just for the record. All right, let's X out and the button's done. We're just gonna go down now and we're gonna change the subscribe form so people can subscribe to your simple and awesome and innovative email newsletter. Let's edit with elementary and let's see what's going on with that email address form. So we're gonna scroll down and I'm guessing it's a WP form because we have that plugin installed. So here we are in the form and let's click edit on the input form. There it is, it's a newsletter sign up form. Beautiful, and we can edit the selected form in WP Forms. So, after checking out display options, not much there. So let's do it. Edit selected form. And here we are in our newsletter signup. Field options, all right, so the label's email. The description could say something like, enter your best email. But we don't need any more text down there. All right, and this page looks good. Let's just change the I'm interested button to sign me up. Awesome, and save it. The last thing you'll wanna do is head over to marketing. And once you click on marketing, we need to add a um, marketing integration, which will give you access to store email addresses and make your email list come to life. So with us, our favorite email newsletter integration is Aweber, but the Aweber add-on is a pro feature and I want us to stay on a shoestring budget. So unless you want to upgrade to Pro, I recommend going with Constant Contact. You can try them out for free, and we also have an awesome two-part series on how to set up Constant Contact email marketing on any WordPress blog, so I'll link you that in the description. You can check that out, get a feel for how Constant Contact works, where they store your email subscribers, how to send out a newsletter, and then you can click this button to try them for free and link it with your existing account, which hopefully you'll enjoy signing up for. So to walk you through that, you'd basically try Constant Contact. Over here, pop in an email address and sign up for free. But good thing we have a YouTube video series on how to set up Constant Contact for your email marketing for free, get a feel for where subscribers are stored, collect your first subscribers, and send them email newsletters. So I'll leave it in the description below. Ideally, you can go ahead and sign up to Constant Contact then, get that all working, and then add new connection. Don't click this button here, try Constant Contact for free because that's just an affiliate link from WP Forms to get you over to Constant Contact. I want you to use our tutorial so you actually learn it a little bit. And then once you're set up, you can add the new connection and everything will be synced and newsletter subscribers will come in from your digital agency website to your list. So that's generally how it'll work. I'm gonna click save though because we don't have time for all that right now and X out and our newsletter form is looking really good. Let's just change it from subscribe to join the cut. That's gonna be the name of our newsletter, the cut. Like an edit or a cut or just a little cut of meat that you get delivered every month. So it might help just to have a little subheadline here. Why don't we add a little heading beneath that heading, tiny one. We can make that a H4 so it's smaller. I'm gonna say the cut is our rare monthly new, and we'll just hit advanced and pad that a little bit on the right so it doesn't touch our email form, and you did it. Exclamation mark and update. And we now have a beautiful email sign up form. All right. Kind of weird though that it asks for people's email twice. So if you want to remove that second form, let's edit the selected form. And we don't want to bother someone someone with the confirm email. So let's get rid of the confirmation and save it. And we should be good to go. Let's X out now. 
check out our homepage and you now have a beautiful email marketing subscription form on the homepage and you can put it on any page as well. And we could also put that on any WordPress page. Sometimes when you leave your site overnight, it might get logged out and then you just have to log back in, reload. All right, now we're gonna come down. All right, we're gonna grab the right side reviews. Just right click on the column editor and copy it. Now let's head back to our contact page. And we might have to change the autoplay video. But, you know, up to you. Depends on how aggressive you need to be to get those new clients from your digital agency WordPress website. All right, guys. So our digital agency site is almost done. Let's get these reviews in. And to add in an element, it's really easy. All you need to do is just find a space for it. You can also use something like a spacer in between two elements, which will clearly just give you a little bit of space. All right, so super cool. But in our case, we just know we can paste something in. So for example, we can paste that in anywhere. If we're editing the heading here, we could just hit. All right, guys, and then if it looks like your columns aren't quite copying because you right click and copy and it just kind of jumps off the copying button, let's try to copy the entire section here. So we're gonna copy from those six dots. Now we're gonna come down to contact and make a new section. So you can always make a new section just to work around and play with new elements and then delete the section. We'll paste it. Now we have four reviews to choose from and we're gonna grab the one from Gilly. We're just gonna grab the review itself. We're gonna put that one right here. And then we're gonna drag Gilly's 4.6 stars or so. All right, cool. And let's see, can we move the stars? All right, so we could take more reviews if we want, but one we'll do for now. We'll delete that section, and then we're just gonna change the color of the stars here to make them pop a little more. So click the edit pencil, and you can see there's two types of stars. That's pretty cool. We're gonna go to style though, and then go to color, and let's make these gold stars. Okay, let's update. Gonna delete our cache here just because those stars aren't listening to us. And then let's go back and refresh the page. We're gonna come on down. Let's try the stars again. Edit, style, color, should have been a gold. There we go. So sometimes you just need to refresh the page and delete the browser cache and then your WordPress site will listen to you. And now we have these awesome, rich looking gold stars. Perfect. Update. And why not make the and why not make the content an even five stars just to give ourselves full credit. And of course, this could be like the founder of Bloomberg or Forbes or Entrepreneur or someone you've worked with, or maybe another local creative digital agency website that you've worked with and partnered up with. So you can grab their testimonial pretty easily by emailing them if they know you and you know them and That'll give people a lot more confidence. It is all about confidence. And if you really wanted to put the stars like next to the name, for example, everything's possible in Elementor. You just have to drop in like a little intersection there. Then you could just do something like take the stars from up top with a little duplicate down to the right column down there. And then with advanced margin and padding, we can move it around. So instead of a margin top, of 50 pushing it down 50 pixels, I'll show you a really cool trick. You can just pop in a minus and then it will take away that space above the stars. So minus like, as you can see, you have full control with margin and padding. You can really position things exactly where you want them. And as a fellow WordPresser, I know that positioning things where you want them is everything. So now we can delete our other stars and remember, if you delete that intersection, it'll delete the stars too, because that's where they're at inside there. So we can tackle some left margin too, like minus 50 minus. And perfect, you did it. All right, and let's see what we made. All right, guys, the very last task in our digital agency website tutorial here is gonna be to animate the homepage so that you reward people for visiting the page and scrolling down. We want animations flying in, not too crazy like in their face, but enough that it keeps your visitors' attention. 
So let's see how to use Elementor and WordPress to capture some animations on your homepage. Let's go to edit with Elementor. All right, and the first thing we're gonna animate is gonna be this little text block right here because we want people reading about your story. So let's click on the pencil like we normally would to edit it. But now instead of going to content or style, we're gonna to go to advanced and motion effects. Here we can see we have our entrance animation and the options really are endless. You can see there's bounces, there's slides, your more typical sort of slides. There's also some of the attention seekers like rubber band, I love, pulse, I love, and the list goes on and on. So I think for this one, we're gonna grab just a swing so someone feels like that text is swinging in to say hello, and we're gonna go down. All right, so we can do it on find out more too. Find out more I think should have a bounce, so let's go to advanced, motion effects, bounce love that bouncing up all right then we can go down and typically in the lower sections people will just have different columns like slide in so for higher s4 we can keep that one just really simple but about us why don't we have the columns do a little something something so just like the text sections or the find out more links we can go to the column advanced motion effects and let's make this column slide in left and the right hand column advanced motion effects slide in right cool all right coming down we can change how our video animates so let's get the entire section selected advanced motion effects and the video is our centerpiece, that's our reel, that's all about our product, and it took months and months to build with a huge team, so that gets a ta-da. And yeah, then here we are at the bottom. So I think that's enough animations for now. Of course, you could add like, instead of three or four, you could add 10, 20 animations, but let's go ahead and see how things look as is. View the page, all right. So the text swung in, to find out how it bounced. All right, down here, things should have slid in. Let's see if they'll slide in. Oh, I guess they slid in before we could get down to them. Okay, so let's go to Edit with Elementor. And we're gonna change a little delay on the columns here. So let's make that animation take a little longer. Advanced, motion effects. Duration's gonna be slow there. Just give people a little more time to get down the page and motion effects. Animation is slow. And update. And we have our ta-da. And why don't we just put one more animation on our little email newsletter pitch here because we want people to actually notice that and not just forget like they normally do for email newsletters. So we have motion effects, entrance animation, how about another attention seeker that we haven't tried before? Like rubber band. And update. And from my experience in the past, visitors really appreciate those little details, little touches you put on the finale of your website so people know that you really care. Kind of like using drone footage at the beginning of a video, it's not gonna change the message of the video, but if it adds that little teeny boost, that little couple more pixels or you know, a couple more grains of salt in terms of pleasure for the viewer, then it's all the more worth it. All right, guys, and you now know how to animate your digital agency website. Okay, guys, next up, we need our blog page to have a few blog posts on it so that when your visitors land here and they like your agency, they like what you're selling, maybe they want to read a little more about past projects or what you're doing out in the world, then you give them something to enjoy. So let's head to the blog. Here we are on our page we made in our nav menu. And you don't want to edit page, you actually just want to start writing blog posts and then this page will fill in as we talked about earlier. So let's go back to our dashboard and go to posts. And we're gonna start by deleting the hello world post. It's kind of cute if you want to read it, go ahead. But we want to start fresh and now let's go to add new. All right guys, so as I mentioned before, three blog posts that will get your blog ranking 
well in Google and have it positioned to get traction and social shares from your readers. Those three posts that have worked for us for over 10 years now since we started in 2011 are really basic but easy to forget. The first one is a welcome to the blog post. The second one is a ultimate guide on your niche. So maybe you have a digital agency website where you create logos or where you create animations for healthcare startups or you create animations for like AI and robotics or something. Or, you know, maybe you just make videos about um, environmental issues. So your ultimate guide is going to be about your niche. It's going to talk about like what your digital products talk about also, like the ultimate guide to saving, you know, local environments or local water systems or the ultimate guide to, um, you know, infusing AI into your everyday lives. It's going to be an ultimate guide. So that's the second one. And the third one is going to be something controversial. You need to take a stance on something mainstream and consensus known in your field and take the opposite stance and challenge it. So that said, I don't have time to write out all those posts for us today. And I'm not an expert on AI or natural ecosystems. I just know a little bit about each one. So we're going to go ahead and title these blog posts and give you the structure. And then it's up to you and your brain power to fill in all the amazing content. At the moment, we just need some text so our blog posts look good. I like going to Pan Ipsum. That's where we can get some dummy text about anything. Like you can get it about Gangnam Style or fish or minerals. So once you find some cool Gangnam Style, or I mean some cool Ipsum, like we can get science and studies, then all you need to do is just copy a brick of it and bring it back to the post and put it in our WordPress classic editor. We're gonna give this post a category so it's not just uncategorized because that looks funny. And we're gonna say, welcome. And publish. And if you view your post, for the very first time, you'll see there's not much to it. And on the blog page, there's not much to it either. So why don't we give our blog post a featured image so it shows up on the blog page. Let's head over to our favorite Pixabay. And because we're a digital agency, we should be in tune with what's going on in the future. So I'm just gonna look up futuristic. And here we are in Pexels getting some futuristic stuff. And I'm just gonna download a couple images for our blog post usage. Go with the 1920 and save this. Welcome to the blog featured image. All right, let's try futuristic again for the second post. Kind of cool here, guys. So many images to choose from. All right, we're gonna grab this futuristic urban street image download save it and then one more futuristic image maybe of some nature in the future all right so here is us with the cool studio here all right super cool and we'll add in one nature image and now let's go back to our blog and to put in the featured image just click on the post title so we're actually looking at the post itself not just the blog page. All right, and if it says this page doesn't exist, that's okay, we'll fix that in a second. Just go back to your dashboard and click post and we'll fix that with permalinks in just a moment. Welcome to the blog. Now scroll down to our featured images, hit featured image, upload files, select files. And all in one fell swoop, we can go to downloads and get the three images we're gonna put on our three strategic blog posts. Okay, great, here they are. So for welcome to the blog post, how about we do this cabin? That's pretty nice. That could be our cabin someday if we work hard enough and buy some land. And now we'll update. All right, and now when we view the post, we have a featured image. Oops, it's really not like in our permalinks, is it? We have an awesome HD featured image at the top of your blog post and on the blog page it shows off your featured image too. And on the blog page you get this awesome border inset because the post sits in the middle of the page. Let's make a new post now. For our second post we can hover on post, add new, 
And this is going to be an ultimate guide to your niche. All right, and pan ipsum will give us some more text. Why don't we go with some cat ipsum or beer ipsum? Everyone likes cats and beers. Paste that and we'll put that in the blog post. And we're going to title this one. Well, it's already titled, but we need a category. So how about ultimate guide? Because maybe you'll make another ultimate guide in the future. And we'll give this a featured image. For this one, we're going to go with like you being all ultimate in the alleyway there, changing everything in your niche, and we'll publish it. And now one more new post. We can just get to another new post from the skinny nav at the top, which I'm sure you'll be clicking on a lot as you write more blog posts. And we'll call this one, you know, like eight things you didn't know about my niche. It's going to be the controversial post. And let's go back and get ourselves some beer ipsum now. Okay, grab a brick of that ipsum text and paste it in. And for category, we're going to say lists and how about one more new category of mind-boggling I don't know but you're gonna be giving people the mind-boggling content and we'll come down and we need that last featured image so set it grab a futuristic image and set featured image and we're good to publish and now when we go to our home page you should have a complete blog with three blog posts, which is a very appropriate amount to launch your website and bring your blog along with it. If you click on your blog post, you'll notice that the link has a little bit of funny stuff like a date in there. And we just want the keywords to your blog posts. Google likes simple and putting a date in there will actually date your post already. So it might look good in the moment, but as time goes on, you know what happens. It'll look older and older and not rank as well in search engines. So. Let's go back to the dashboard and let's reset our permalinks by hovering on settings, permalinks. And we're going to just choose in the permalink structure area, post name. That's what we all do these days. And that's what I've been doing on my blogs ever since I focused on Google rankings. Post name is the simplest way to do it. And you don't need a custom structure or anything like that anymore. And save changes and you've now reset your permalinks. So that'll also fix it if you're getting 500 errors or 400 errors on your blog posts. All right guys, so as I think more and more about what you want to do with your digital agency website in WordPress, one task I thought is you might wanna upload PDFs or videos to show your audience a preview of your work. So why don't we head to our about page or our services page, it's up to you, and add a new section where we embed PDFs with a WordPress PDF embedder we obviously know how to put in a YouTube video where it plays automatically or people can play it, but what if you want people to download something? That's what we're gonna cover now. So let's go to our about page, for example, and edit with Elementor. We're gonna add a new section right beneath our core values. So we're gonna find the plus and add a new one. All right, and we're just gonna drag in the intersection. Voila. Okay, awesome. Now we're going to go back to the elements and drag in a text editor on the left. Text editor is generally where I like creating stuff from scratch. Just slide that into that slim little purple line. And we're also going to bring in another text editor on the right. Cool. All right. We can go to advanced now and we can even give ourselves some unlinked margin or padding on the top. So things space down a little but we want to be on the whole section settings. Advanced, how about maybe a little hundo up top? Okay, so for a PDF, let's say you have your resume. All right, and here we can see is my Greg Narayan resume hedge fund. It's already in Adobe Acrobat PDF format. So if you don't have that in PDF and you're in OpenOffice, which is free, if you don't have Microsoft Word, you can use OpenOffice on any PC or Pages on any Apple computer and export, save it to a PDF. So here we have a PDF, let's upload it to WordPress. So I'm gonna to come to our text editor here 
and just get rid of the dummy text. And now I'm going to go to Add Media, Upload Files, Select Files, double click on Resume, and insert it into Post. And there it is. And if we go to the Text tab, we can see it's a link. It's just a link to the PDF so someone can right click, save it. So that's pretty cool. And then on the right, we can put in a video. So let's say we delete this Laura Mipsum. And we go to Add Media, Upload Files. And we're just going to upload a small video I've made for a YouTube tutorial. So you can grab any smaller video, arranged by size. Maybe you have a little one. Like this is a hilarious old skate video of all of us. Oh, nice one, Pat. And then we're going to go ahead and upload it. So we can just open it. So it exceeds the maximum size. All right, so we want the file to be a little smaller in megabytes. So anyways, I found our Yoga Walks video, which is smaller. Once you have a smaller video that you upload to WordPress, maybe it's you talking on your iPhone, like a little interview or a pitch or walking around your office. You can get that uploaded. And if it takes forever still, you can always use my favorite video compressor app called Handbrake. Handbrake looks like this little cocktail with a pineapple. And basically all you do is just open it up. Then you open a video source. Like we have that cool guest video. Open it up and open. Then you choose a couple presets, but the defaults are really good already. I like clicking web optimize and then you just start it. And basically it's going to break down the video file and reconstruct it in an order that's compressed and much smaller to upload to the web. So start, it'll take its time here, and it'll tell you where it's gonna save the new video as, here in our home folder, Movies. Okay, so whichever happens first, the video uploads to WordPress or Handbrake breaks down the video, we will have something working. Let's go back to our Add Media, and the Yoga Walks uploaded. So to enter that new post, just click Insert in a Post, and it'll be a MP4, embedded just like a YouTube video would embed. So this is the method of uploading a video directly to WordPress as opposed to just embedding it. And what you want to do now is instead of just the video displaying, we're going to give people a link to download it. So let's go to the visual and say download our yoga reel and then we'll just highlight some anchor text and add media. Find the video and just grab the file URL of it. Copy that and then we're going to come back and link that on our anchor text as such. And now you have a downloadable video link. When someone right clicks it, they can just save one of your videos about your digital agency right from their computer down to their desktop and then they'll have your video forever. Let's say you want to embed the PDF though, if it's like an explanation of how to use your product or maybe some best practices or guidelines. You can easily embed PDFs in WordPress. Head to Plugins, Add New, and let's just look up PDF Embedder. And there it is, created by WP PDF Embedder Team. <clears throat> we'll install it and activate, and beautiful. And now when we're on our pages, editing our About page, with Elementary, of course, you'll be able to get that PDF to display fully onto a page or a blog post. So here we are in our PDF that's linked and right click it and edit. And now if we go to the text tab, you can see it's still just a link. But if we go back to visual, add a media again and add another PDF and insert into post, PDF Embedder will automatically wrap that PDF in a little bit of short code, starting with PDF dash embedder URL equals the WordPress file and it'll show up as a little short code munch. So what we want to do is cut that and put it into our text tab so it renders perfectly. And when I click off here, it should show up. And if it doesn't, then just go ahead and update and head back to your page and let's see it in action. Update one more time. Sometimes when you go back to that hamburger menu, it wants you to update one more time. And now scroll down and here we have our awesome PDF resume. 
This plugin is so cool too, it even gives you these arrows by default, super professional looking, and the zoom feature. So people can really get in there and see your guidelines or your resume or whatever you're PDFing. Hey guys, and real sneaky, I'm gonna update our video here with a cool video with a song, because if it's gonna be on autoplay, it might as well start with the song that pumps us up. Here we are, grabbing a really cool video with the song. And edit with Elementor. And come on down here. And edit our video element. And here we are with the link. We'll just get rid of that link. Paste in a new link. Awesome. And update. <laughs> so here we are at the end of our tutorial. And I thought we'd end our digital agency website video with a banger. I want to show you how to replace this hero image at the top of your homepage or any page with a slider from the famous layer slider WP that we've been using on e-commerce websites and lots of different blogs for years now. It's going to be a little bit of work. We're going to need graphics from Pixabay and also from our phone. And the hardest part is going to be putting the slider into Elementor. All right, guys, that does it for the tutorial. I hope you're just as pumped as our friend here because he got a new client and I'm confident you're going to get plenty of new clients with your now finished digital agency website in WordPress. I hope it all was uh, relatively easy for you guys. I know there were some tough parts that we navigated together and I want to say thank you so much for getting through it with me. It's always an honor to be your teacher. That's what makes my days go around. I don't really care about, you know, growing subscribers or growing views on YouTube like other people do. It's more just about helping you as an individual person. Um, and then I feel good that we've at least accomplished that much and gotten one more digital agency WordPress website out there the right way. So thanks so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe if you liked what we did today. That way you'll get our next videos on things revolving around WordPress. Maybe learn how to make other types of websites like an automotive website or a lawyer website or a doctor website. And uh, yeah, I'm also here for any questions about your current website because we never leave you behind. Rate the video with a thumbs up or thumbs down too. And yeah, I'm Graydon Ryan. I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching.